Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. They <laughs> are fun. And they're they're convenient. Fun. Yeah. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a yeah. new way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. So what's the best part about your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together our voices grow. Together we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together we are unstoppable. Together we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they yeah. didn't wait the next week. You're, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here. A family accusing a school district of turning a blind eye as their daughter with special needs allegedly assaulted on a bus over and over and over again. The district's response when we pressed for answers. And another day, another candidate dropping out of the presidential race. What this means here in Georgia with early voting already underway for our March 24th primary. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. But first tonight, Governor Brian Kemp says there is no reason to panic over coronavirus here in Georgia. He gave us an update late this afternoon during our 5 o'clock news. We'll hear from him in a moment. Georgia still has... Two only confirmed cases, both in Fulton County and both reportedly mild. We are one of 19 states that have confirmed cases. Tennessee just confirmed its first patient. NBC News reports 12 people in the U.S. have died, 11 of them in Washington State where the virus was confirmed in a nursing home. Today, Georgia's state health lab began testing for coronavirus itself. They've gone through 50 kits already, but again, there are only two confirmed cases here in Fulton County. Georgia, along with other states, can now get more financial support in fighting the spread of coronavirus since Congress passed its $8.3 billion response plan. Cheryl Preheim spoke to Governor Kemp about the state's response and the plans moving forward. You made the announcement today that testing for COVID-19 is now an essential health benefit, so no one gets turned away, not even people who don't have insurance. Talk more about that. Yeah, that was really coming out of the White House and Vice President Pence task force, uh, which is good news for people that are on Medicaid, Medicare, private health plans. Uh, we'll pay for that, that testing. And then also those that are uninsured will also be able to receive the test free. So I think that gives Georgians a peace of mind should they ever need the test. I continue to tell people the risk remains very low here right now. The state now has more test kits, and today the number of tests tripled. So you're feeling comfortable with the resources that Georgia has at this point? I am. Dr. Toomey gave an update today uh, on the tests that she has and what they're doing and how that works in conjunction with the CDC. Uh, we feel good about that. We know that there'll be more resources on the way next week. That's something I spoke to the vice president about last night. Uh, there's a lot of private sector labs that are ramping up very quickly to be able to do the testing as well. And when that happens, it'll actually expand uh, the reach exponentially on that. And then we have a lot of other things that we have going on right now. I spoke to the vice president about uh, travel, specifically those coming from Italy and South Korea, and I feel really good about how things are uh, working at the airport. John Selden from Hartsfield-Jackson gave a great update today. 
and uh, it's, it's just good for us to get that information out to the public. So we just had the Olympic marathon trials. Governor, 200,000 people came downtown for the NCAA tournament is later this month. Do you see any impact or changes for big events where things stand at this point? I do not right now. As I said, the, uh, you know, the, the risk remains very low. We just need to urge, uh, continue to urge people to use best practices like they would during flu season. You know, keep your hands washed, use hand sanitizers. You know, don't go out if you're, if you're sick or you have a fever. Uh, and as I've been saying the last several days, if you do start developing a fever or some of the symptoms for either the flu or potentially for the COVID-19, uh, call your health care provider to make arrangements on how they can deal with getting you into the office where you're not just showing up in, in the waiting room. Uh, those common sense, th sense things will really help us. The public is going to be part of the first line of defense for this. And uh, we continue to communicate with the medical community, a lot of other stakeholders, and really plan uh, for what happens, you know, if, if things do heat up here. But that is not the case right now. We're just going to be overprepared, and hopefully uh, we won't see those type things. You talked about it today, Governor. Uh, we are in an international hub with our airport. Talk about the efforts that are going on at length right now at the airport, cleaning planes. You talked about cleaning the building as well. Yeah, John Zeldin, I think, uh, gave a great update. Uh, they've ramped up uh, their disinfectant process at the airport. When you think about, you know, putting your hand on escalators, riding the train, you know, sitting in seats at the terminal, they've ramped that up. I felt very comfortable about what he was saying for the passengers that are coming in from North Korea, uh, from Korea and, and Northern Italy. Uh, those passengers are being screened multiple times before they leave those countries. Um, so we know that before they get on the plane even to come here and then there's people on the ground here that are doing a lot more detailed questioning than they normally would when people are coming through customs. So um, I feel really good about that. John said they had one person that they had to get tested today because they had developed a fever on the flight, but that person tested negative. So I think those processes are working at the airport and uh, I know that's something that the vice president and I have spoken about and the administration has done a great job being very proactive in thinking about those issues. We are really made the commitment here, Governor, to focus on facts and, and not fear. What message would you want to leave Georgians with this evening? Well, I'm very grateful for that, and that is exactly what we need to be doing. That's a big message that I've been telling people is don't believe hoaxes, don't fall for scams, continue to follow the information that is coming directly from the governor's office or the Georgia Department of Public Health, as well as our federal partners like the CDC. I know the EPA put out some cleaning information today for disinfecting. Uh, just all those things that are coming from official government sources is really the best information. I have pledged to the people of this state that I'm going to be transparent. If there's something that happens good or bad, we're going to share that news so we can continue to be prepared here in Georgia. All right, Governor, thank you for the time. I know you're getting many questions every day as we are, and we'll do our best to keep answering them. We really appreciate the time. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me on. We've learned a teacher at a Metro Atlanta prep academy may have potentially been exposed to coronavirus. Now we want to spread facts and not fear. That is our goal here at 11 Alive. It relates back to that 15 year old who tested positive in Fulton County. Although he was homeschooled, he attended classes at the Living Science Study Center in Cherokee County last Wednesday. That was two days before he started feeling sick. Now recently, Compass Prep Academy posted a statement on its website saying a teacher's child attended classes with that 15 year old who is sick. According to the statement, the teacher's child is showing symptoms, but we do want to stress the child has not tested positive for the virus. Compass Prep Academy says another staff member carpools with people who had direct contact with the 15 year old, but the staffer's contact was secondary. Still out of an abundance of caution, the academy has decided to close until March 17th. Savannah, State's, uh, Savannah Street's Patrick's Day celebrations will go on as planned, despite concerns over the spread of coronavirus. Of course, it's one of the most popular destinations for St. Patrick's Day in our state and around the country. It's just an enormous happening. 
City officials met today to say the schedule is not being pushed back. The celebrations will run from the 13th to the 15th. Green beer everywhere and a lot of fun, and the fun will continue. People planning the celebration still are taking precautions, and they have arranged for more hand-washing, sanitizing stations as well, and they are following the CDC's guidelines, asking people to stay home if they are ill. They are also asking businesses to be very careful about cleaning doorknobs and even pens that people are using to pay their bills inside of bars and restaurants. And CNN is putting its studio tours on hold to keep the virus from spreading. The tours are popular with tourists in Atlanta. CNN says this is just out of an abundance of caution. And other businesses like State Farm and Time Warner are restricting travel for their employees. You can find more about that in the As Seen on TV section of our 11 Alive app. Well, the rain, it is out of here, and we're seeing those clouds that are breaking up out there this evening as some colder air uh, starts to move in here and drier air starts to move in as well. Now, before we celebrate the return of that sunshine, you really need to understand, though, there's one other thing you need to keep in mind during the day tomorrow. The wind is really going to be kicking up, and we have a wind advisory in effect for North Georgia, Metro Atlanta, down into Central Georgia and South Georgia, too. Behind this system, those winds are going to be coming in from the north northwest sustained between 10 and 20 miles an hour, but we'll have some wind gusts up to around 30 miles an hour. So even though we don't have any thunderstorms, any rain or anything in the forecast, you still have to watch for the potential for some trees to come down during the day tomorrow. That's because we have that saturated the ground. The ground is very moist. So these winds gusting to 30 miles an hour or greater could still bring down some trees during the day on Friday. Stay with us. We'll let you know when those winds will settle down and if this sunshine will persist through the weekend. And you can keep track of our mercurial weather by downloading the 11 Alive News app. You'll get severe weather alerts and flash flood warnings sent right to your phone, even if your power goes out. It's a good tool to have. Starting off your speed feed tonight, accusations that a special needs student was repeatedly abused by another student on a school bus. The 14-year-old family is suing the Fulton County School District. The lawsuit alleges the 14-year-old was abused for nearly two weeks without any kind of intervention from the bus driver. The district says Fulton County School Police are now investigating the allegations, but it's limited in what it can say because the case now involves minors. We are talking to the family's lawyer tonight on Up Late at 11 o'clock. The Checkers employee accused of shooting a customer appeared in court for the first time. Jaunty Robinson allegedly shot a customer at the customer at the uh, Checkers on Candler Road in Decatur while arguing over the wrong order. The victim's going to live. Robinson's bond was set today at $20,000. Unbelievable. Clayton County Police now responding to this viral video making the rounds on social media. It shows cars stunt drifting on I-285, the tunnel near the airport, stopping traffic and causing a backup. Police say it happened early Sunday morning. They say officers were sent out within six minutes. But those drifters, they were organized. They knew what they were doing. They got away before any law enforcement could find them. Police say they are working to combat those kinds of vehicle stunts, and they are continuing their investigation. Field of Democratic presidential candidates narrowing even more ahead of Georgia's primary on the 24th. What the remaining candidates need to do to win the state. We're talking Biden and Sanders. And don't forget, we are streaming right now on the 11 Alive YouTube channel. You can subscribe and join the conversation right there in the community section. We've got more 11 Alive news in primetime right after the break. Weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyper-local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his <laughs> way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you just do what I say. I'm no, 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 You can do what I do. I'm going to make Oh, and so I was saying.
There is always something filming here in Atlanta, from movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A-Scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. Ah, it's in my drafts. That's my bad. <laughs> So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm -hmm. I, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've like got the most beautiful. Senator Elizabeth Warren has dropped out of the race for the Democratic presidential nomination. She failed to win any state on Super Tuesday, including her home state of Massachusetts. She says she is taking a breath before deciding to endorse any other candidates. The race right now is still far from undecided. We head into Georgia's presidential primary on March 24th. Neither Bernie Sanders nor Joe Biden has gained enough delegates to secure that nomination yet. Emory political science professor Andre Gillespie says while they are both part of the same party, they pull in a very different kind of Democratic voter. African Americans are more likely to identify themselves ideologically as being moderate to conservative. And so these are precisely the types of people who would be more comfortable with Joe Biden's message as opposed to Bernie Sanders' message. Georgia has a large African-American voting population. Add to the mix Georgia's progressive young Democrats vying for Sanders, and it's likely the two candidates will be in Georgia this month vying for every vote they can get. Coming up in the next half hour, we're going to take a look at how Warren's announcement impacts other states around the country that still have yet to vote just like us. Many of you might watch the news on the night of Georgia's primary to see which candidate is pulling ahead. And we have received questions about how news organizations can predict who is going to win the race without official results. And it does not involve a Ouija board, nor does it involve, what, a Rubik's Cube? <laughs> Jason Puckett with our Verify team is here to answer all questions you may have about the prognostication business of politics. On Super Tuesday, a number went viral. And it wasn't a delegate count. It was actually zero. People were wondering how networks were calling the winners with zero official results. This happened with Nevada, Vermont, and even South Carolina on Saturday. And comments show confusion. How can a news outlet call an election when the state hasn't published any results? So we're verifying. How do networks call an election with zero official numbers? Our sources, posts from NBC, the Associated Press, and the National Election Pool, or the NEP. So the answer is actually pretty straightforward. Exit polls. The NEP is a group of pollsters and media networks, CNN, ABC, NBC, CBS, and more. When a voter leaves a voting location, exit poll workers ask them who they voted for. The more voters they poll, the more accurate the results. Now, these aren't perfect. They do have decent margins of error. And in close races, the networks will wait to call the winner. But sometimes the results are strong enough to cover that margin of error and then some, like South Carolina. Joe Biden won by nearly 30 percent. So while it may seem like some back channel knowledge is being passed around, we can verify the races that were called at zero percent were done by using exit polls that showed a very strong lead. Got any other questions? Send us an email. I mentioned earlier about that wind advisory in effect. I just want to go over this again to make sure everybody understands that even though it's going to be a beautiful day here on Friday, we still need to be aware, though, of those winds that are going to be kind of strong at times. Sustained from 10 to 20 miles an hour coming in from the northwest at times will have gusts up to 30 miles an hour. And with the saturated ground, you know, the ground is so wet. And with some of those trees that are going to be blowing around, it is possible that those wind gusts could bring down some trees, maybe even cause some power outages even on a bright sunny day. You don't have to have thunderstorm winds to bring trees down. They can come down with winds like this as well. So here's what we're watching through the overnight hours. We're going to see those winds starting to kick up by seven in the morning. We're going to see wind gusts around 23 miles an hour here in Atlanta. Many places will be between 20 and 25 mile an hour wind gusts for the morning hours. At lunchtime, we're talking about uh, 20 to maybe 30 mile an hour wind gusts in some spots, and then it kicks up again in the afternoon. 25 
to 30 mile an hour wind gust uh, for the five o'clock hour. The wind advisory does expire on Friday, but it's still going to be kind of breezy though Friday night into Saturday morning, and then those winds start calming down more on Saturday afternoon. Those wind gusts going down to below 10 miles an hour. So just keep that in mind. A blustery day on Friday, uh, then that wind starts to die down. We're going to see these temperatures cooling off tonight as well. It, through midnight, will be right around 46 degrees, and then temperatures trending down a little bit as those clouds clear out. Moving down to about 43 degrees here by tomorrow morning. Officially, I think here in Atlanta, we'll move down to 41 in the city and then get up to 57 in the afternoon. That sun is going to help to warm things up a little bit. But remember, that wind will be kicking up ushering in that cooler air so that battle's going to be going on. So we're going to go with a nine on the wasometer. I know a lot of folks are going to be happy to see that sunshine. We're saying goodbye to that rain, the back edge of the moisture continuing to move out of our area. And then as we go through the nighttime hours tonight, we will see clearing skies and there comes that northwesterly flow. Those winds start kicking up during the day in the morning hours. It's still going to be breezy with us in the afternoon hours here on Friday, but it's mostly sunny skies, not only for Friday, but that's going to persist into Saturday. Saturday as well. Take a look at this starting Saturday morning. Temperatures near freezing in some spots. That's the freezing line, that blue line that you see right there. And then we uh, do warm up in the afternoon. We'll get up into the upper 50s and lower 60s here for your Saturday afternoon. Looking like we're staying dry into Sunday as well. Seven day forecast shows that mostly sunny condition Friday, Saturday. By Sunday, we're up to 65 with mostly sunny skies. And don't forget this weekend is the weekend that we uh, spring forward. Set your clocks ahead one hour. Do that before you go to bed on Saturday night. And then a few more clouds build in Monday and then showers redeveloping Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday with high temperatures that will be in the upper 60s Tuesday and Wednesday up to about 70 by Thursday. A Georgia family is desperate for answers after their daughter was born with an incredibly rare heart defect. She's just three weeks old, but her family says her condition has really stumped surgeons who are doing everything they can to help her. Caitlin Ross met with her family outside Children's Health Care of Atlanta. She's beautiful. She's great. She's a blessing, honestly. Graceland's mom is already so proud of her daughter and all she's endured. She had multiple BSDs, which I described as Swiss cheese. Graceland was born with a rare form of congenital heart disease, and her family says doctors told them there are an uncountable number of holes in her heart. They say surgeons told them they have never seen anyone like her. Your natural instinct is to want to fix and uh, nurture and take care of and when you feel helpless and you cannot fix and nurture and take care of um, it, it was overwhelming. Doctors put Graceland on a life-saving machine that acts as her heart and lungs. Most patients are on it for three or four days as their hearts recover. Graceland has been on it for 14 days while doctors do everything they can to help. Everybody here at the hospital has been amazing and I know and, and the family knows they've done everything that they can that go above and beyond. If doctors in Atlanta can't save Graceland, her family hopes a cardiologist somewhere will see her diagnosis and know what to do to help. They hope she beats the odds. We're hoping that she is in the lecture rooms in the future next to the medical professors and they could tell the story of how everybody was scratching their heads and they'll just introduce Graceland Webb and here she is. Well, the family has established a website to follow Graceland's care. And if you want to know more about her story, we have a link for you up on 11alive.com. As more sports leagues address the coronavirus and try to prevent its spread, what should you do? We asked your 11 Alive medical correspondent, Dr. Ruddy, about the risks of being in large crowds in stadiums. We know you have questions and concerns. We know there's fear, but when fear drives us, we overreact and underprepare. So here's our promise to you as 11 Alive covers coronavirus. We promise that fear will never be our goal. We'll find the best experts and ask informed questions. We'll hold the powerful accountable to answer them. We'll bring you context and perspective to numbers that are always changing. We will always try our best to answer all of your questions. And if you're not getting the information you need or think there are other stories we need to share, please let us know. We are here to serve you, our community, with facts to help you prepare, be safe, and have some peace of mind. You name it. And so the A scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, 
Good on that. Text you. All right. Ah, it's in my drafts. That's my bad. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm -hmm. I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've like got the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jess? I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh, Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. right, right. about I mean, that. Well, reward would be... Slimming. Slimming down. Okay. Yes. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah. A little water yes. in my cup. And and beautiful skin. <laughs> well, you know, well, even too. more beautiful skin. You know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not gonna be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush weekdays, five to seven a.m. Only on Eleven Alive. Some mornings, what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm gonna go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your Morning Rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. The coronavirus continuing to be a global issue. There are, are a lot of angles to approach this new virus, but we want to talk about the implications to sports and the sports community. Joining us right now is Dr. Sujatha Reddy, and we have seen Italy ban spectators from sporting events for the next month. Major events in the United States coming in Augusta, the Masters, Final Four here in Atlanta. How should people read this? Yeah, and that's a hard question to answer, but I think we may have to take this by a person-to-person -person basis, meaning if you have a ticket to this event, I think you're going to have to wait till it gets closer. Then maybe you think about your individual health, because people may be putting themselves at risk if they attend these events. And what do I mean by that? If there's a person in the crowd sitting next to you, a row down, right. who has the coronavirus, you have a chance of catching it. It's just really hard to answer that, and I think everyone is going to have to make, forgive the pun, a game time decision. Can stadiums do something about this? Can they limit the possibility of contact or how could they possibly do that? You know, I thought about that and perhaps instead of having seats right next to each other, we have space in between. Wow. Um, maybe you limit which concession stands, you restrict people where they can go, but that really will affect the feel of the game, so I'm not sure. I even thought to myself, could people possibly be tested for a fever as they're entering, as we're seeing when people are getting off airplanes from certain countries, but we know this virus can be transmitted before someone potentially has a fever, so that may not protect you. But having said that, we know the vast majority of people that contract the coronavirus will recover with no problem yeah. and only mild you know, illness. The Summer Games of 2020 in Tokyo, in Asia, it's hard to imagine how it does not impact these games. And again, I'm saying that early March. Do you have yeah. the athletes compete without spectators? Well, I, I don't know what, what that looks like, but it's a very hard decision to make. And again, as you mentioned, not something we've dealt with before. All right, Dr. Reddy, thanks for your observations. We appreciate Thank it. You. A bottle of hand sanitizer going for, get this, hundreds of dollars online. Wow. Next, how Amazon is fighting back against price gouging during the coronavirus outbreak. It's a yeah. new way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, 
they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together, our voices grow. Together, we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together, we are unstoppable. Together, we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they didn't yeah. wait the next week. You're, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Live's Chesley McNeil. I'm gonna give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once an Olympic city, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from five to seven on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my love? As the number of cases grows in more than a dozen states across the country, lawmakers are ramping up the response to fight the spread of coronavirus. Today, the Senate passed an $8 billion emergency funding bill. Now, this comes after both Washington State and California declare a state of emergency. Now, Governor Brian Kemp confirmed today that there still are only two cases. They are in Fulton County, but we know that there are a lot of fears, a lot of conjecture out there about what coronavirus is and what it is not. And people with obsessive compulsive disorder are particularly vulnerable. 11 Alive's Latasha Given sat down with a therapist who offered some advice on how to keep that fear in check. Even before coronavirus, just worries about the flu can keep people with OCD from going out and participating in activities that they might otherwise enjoy. OCD therapist Shala Nicely says many of the 2.2 million Americans who struggle with OCD now have heightened fears with the coronavirus outbreak. Nicely says while many may think of OCD sufferers as people who like to be extra clean and have things organized, but in reality, she says it's the 10th most debilitating medical condition in the world. People become locked in this mental prison from which they can't escape. Those people look around the world as a very dangerous place. Behavior modeling is one method used to treat OCD, but guidelines on how to prevent the spread of the virus may actually trigger fears in OCD patients. For example, the CDC's advice to frequently wash your hands may lead OCD sufferers who may, let's say, wash their hands 100 times a day to think they need to continue to do that. For me, it's been a constant state of fear. Christopher Tronson suffers from OCD. He says he can normally talk himself down when people are sick or cough around him. But the sight of people wearing masks, the international travel advisories, and the cases now here in the U.S. raises his anxiety to a new level. You know, people are dying from it. It just feels like there's nothing I can do and I feel out of control about it. Nicely says there are two things you can do. First, manage your information intake, meaning limit how often you check the news or 
social media for coronavirus updates. Setting boundaries to once a day or every other day could be helpful. Second, keep reminding yourself that following the CDC and the World Health Organization's guidelines are in your control. And that's enough to keep most people safe. Well, if you've been to any of the big box stores, Costco's, Sam's, any of those places, you have seen people buying up products that help disinfect homes or offices. And some people are buying those products. And then, of course, they're reselling them online with huge markups, taking advantage of issues that are going around the world right now. But Amazon fighting back against price gouging. Cheryl Preheim connecting the dots for us. This week, people started to report price gouging on Amazon. In some cases, hand sanitizer selling for hundreds of dollars. Now Amazon is working overtime to put a stop to it. It blocked or removed one million products for just that. It's a violation of several Amazon seller policies. One requires you to provide accurate information to Amazon and customers at all times. Another prohibits manipulation of sales rank by making claims in the product's title. Amazon pulled other products for falsely advertising their effectiveness against coronavirus. A company spokesperson says they are actively monitoring for new policy violations. We have a section with everything you need to know about the coronavirus on 11alive.com. You can also learn more about the symptoms and how long it typically takes to recover from the virus. We have been in a very wet pattern all this week, and now we are finally beginning the drying out process. Take a look at this map, and when you see the dark blue and the purple colors, that's indicating when the air is drying out. We are experiencing that right now, that uh, wet air or the more moist air is pushing off to the uh, south and to the east of us. And it looks like this dry air is gonna be with us for a while. During the day tomorrow, plenty of sunshine, no rain around. On Saturday, a rain-free day. Sunday is also going to be a rain-free day with plenty of dry air in place. And then the moisture starts to move back in next week. On Monday, we'll see a few more clouds building in, but then look at this. You see the moist air coming back. That means our rain chances increasing on Tuesday and into Wednesday and Thursday. That will increase those rain chances as well. Stay with us. We'll talk about even though we're drying out during the day tomorrow, you still need to keep in mind the gusty winds that are going to be in place. We'll talk more about that wind advisory. Typing our speed feed tonight, an overnight fire destroyed the inside of a Gwinnett County clothing warehouse. Take a look at this. The flames started inside this building along Faith Industrial Boulevard in Buford around 430 this morning. No one was hurt, but most of the building was destroyed. The cause of that fire is still under investigation. Delta announced plans to renovate its Sky Club at Hartsfield Jackson. This is according to our partners at the Atlanta Business Chronicle. The Sky Club in Concourse B will be equipped with a new food service area and renovated bathrooms. The plan is expected to cost $68,000 and it's part of a multi-year plan to upgrade Sky Clubs across the country. Bass fishing is going to become an official high school sport. Georgia will be the fifth state in the country to make it all official, partnering with the world's largest tournament fishing organization, Fishing League Worldwide. It will be co-ed with no des designated season. And you can find more information on 11alive.com about all of those things, especially the Sky Club. It's going to be a lot of kids happy about that. A lot of fun to be had in the years ahead. The state would have to immediately disclose all unauthorized leaks of ethylene oxide at plants like Cobb County Sterengetics under a bill passed out of a House committee today. There have been growing concerns the toxin could be putting residents' health in jeopardy. 11 Alive's Doug Richards has more on the breakthrough today with lawmakers on both sides. There are about a half dozen ethylene oxide bills in the legislature this session, but the one that is advancing is one written by a Cobb County Republican. Activists living near Cobb County's sterogenics plant have been pushing a measure that requires plants like sterogenics to immediately disclose to the state any leak of ethylene oxide. That's a gas described by the EPA as a carcinogen. The question has been how proactively the state should disclose those leaks to the public. Sterogenics and a plant in Covington called BD use ethylene oxide to sterilize medical equipment. Republicans introduced a bill that would require immediate disclosure of any ethylene oxide leak to the EPD. Democrats wanted that too, plus for the EPD to immediately post the disclosures on its website. Republicans wrote the website disclosure out of their bill. Today, they wrote it back in. 
This is what the community wanted. When we first started this, what we wanted was for any accidental release to be reported to EPD and for EPD to be able to disclose that information to the public without the public having to file open records request. The history of ethylene oxide leaks is eye-opening. In Covington, the BD plant reported leaks in September 2019 and January 2016. In Cobb County, Sturagenics reported ethylene oxide leaks in July of last year, as well as two leaks in 2018. There was no law on the books for those companies to disclose some of those smaller leaks. This bill would require those companies to disclose any ethylene oxide leak and for the state to immediately make them known to the public. Senator Warren dropping out of the race. Next, the latest reaction from her team and how experts say her decision will impact the race. From different backgrounds, languages, and religions, and who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once in Olympic City, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from 5 to 7 on The Morning Rush on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, away. Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, auntie. No. Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boil Water Advisory. Hyper-local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make, call me, but I... I will not be running for president in 2020, but I guarantee I will stay in the fight. That was uh, Elizabeth Warren today officially announcing her suspension of her campaign. The move comes just days after she suffered a poor showing at Super Tuesday. She didn't win a single state, including her own of Massachusetts. Now everyone is asking the same question. Who will she endorse? NBC's Chris Ballone has more for, for us tonight. For Senator Elizabeth Warren, her bid for the White House ended where it started, outside her Cambridge, Massachusetts home. I will not be running for president in 2020, but I guarantee I will stay in the fight. Warren suspended her campaign two days after a disappointing showing on Super Tuesday. 
Once a front runner, the policy expert with a plan for everything. Warren couldn't win over enough progressives to beat Bernie Sanders, nor enough moderates to top Joe Biden. Now both will battle head to head to win the nomination. Online and in person, Biden and Sanders heap praise on Warren upon her exit. She has changed political consciousness in America. But the senator is not endorsing either candidate. Not right now. Warren's run will be remembered for her hours-long selfie lines and making pinky promises with young girls, encouraging them to run for office someday, and for effectively ending the run of New York billionaire Michael Bloomberg. And no, I'm not talking about Donald Trump. I'm talking about Mayor Bloomberg. As Warren returns to the sidelines, the race to become the Democratic nominee has gone from the most diverse field in history down to two white men in their late 70s. I have no regrets at all. It had, this has been the honor of a lifetime. Now the battle for Biden and Sanders to win over Elizabeth Warren's supporters is on. Well, it looks like the rain is out of here. The clouds are breaking up tonight. But uh, before we celebrate the return of the sunshine and the dry air moving in, I just want you to be aware it's going to be very windy during the day on Friday. And it's going to be windy enough that we could see some trees coming down thanks to the saturated ground. Since we've had so much rain, the ground is really wet. And with these winds coming in, it is possible that some trees could come down and maybe even cause some power outages. We're expecting winds from the northwest. It'll be between 10 and 20 miles an hour sustained, but we could have some wind gusts up to 30 miles an hour. So it's going to, be, going to be rather blustery during the day while we're out enjoying that nice sunshine that we have. Now, uh, this evening, the winds are actually fine. They're just going to start kicking in while you're sleeping tonight. And by tomorrow morning, this is at 7 in the morning, you see these winds that are gusting between 20 and 25 miles an hour. That's going to be with us around lunchtime as well, between 20, 25 mile an hour winds while you're eating lunch. And then in the afternoon, still, Wind gusts between 20 and 25 miles an hour. Even some higher gusts up in Blairsville near 29, 30 mile an hour wind gusts there. Uh, we do think that that wind advisory is going to expire at 7 o'clock on Friday. It's still going to be breezy, but it'll be going below the wind advisory criteria. And by Saturday morning, wind gusts will be most likely around 20 miles an hour or less. And then during the day on Saturday, the winds will die down even more. And we see those winds and wind gusts going to below 10 miles an hour. So it'll be a little more enjoyable on Saturday with that sunshine because the wind will begin to die down. But we are finally drying out. We just have that cool, windy condition that we'll be dealing with on Friday. And then temperatures warming up a little bit more as we head into the weekend. We'll be in the 50s here on Friday, but then we do move, move up into the 60s as we head into the weekend. So here's a look at the wasometer fr for Friday. This is a, on a scale from 1 to 11 where we rate your weather. We're going to go with the 9. I know a lot of us are going to look out and see the sun and think it should be an 11 on the wasometer, but temperature is a little cool and also that wind is going to make it feel a little more uncomfortable. That's why we're going with the 9. Here's a look at what we're going to be watching uh, Friday morning. Uh, you can see here that wind as it's uh, in our area through the day on Friday. Friday, mostly sunny skies. All that moisture has moved out of here, so it's going to be very dry as well. And then on Saturday, this blue line you see on the map here, that's the freezing line. Everywhere north of that line is where we're going to see temperatures around freezing. We'll be close to freezing in Atlanta on Saturday morning. I think a lot of you in the outlying areas will be at freezing. Then we warm up in the afternoon, still with plenty of sunshine to those temperatures that will be uh, right around 60 degrees. 57 for a high Friday, 60 Saturday as the wind dies down, mostly sunny Sunday as well. And don't forget, Spring forward this weekend, we go back to daylight saving time. Set your clock uh, ahead one hour before you go to bed on Saturday night. 66 Monday with clouds increasing, and then the rain chance at 40%. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, temperatures climbing to the upper 60s to right around 70 degrees. There's some news tonight out of Middle Tennessee where those devastating tornadoes hit earlier in the week. First of all, Taylor Swift is donating $1 million to reconstruction and to help the communities through there. The search and rescue has also ended all of the more than six dozen people missing after those tornadoes have been found and they are safe. So the mission in the strike zone now shifts to what is going to be a very difficult cleanup and recovery. Here's Jay Gray from one of the hardest hit areas, Cookville, Tennessee, not far from Nashville. Two days later. It's a war zone. The devastation scattered across Middle Tennessee is still hard to comprehend. It's gone. Survivors' emotions a lot like the landscape here. I'm just a jumble mess right now. I'm just thankful, grateful. It's really all the words you can get is some blessed. I'm here. I have my life. 
We are learning more now about the killer tornadoes that battered the region, the deadliest in Putnam County, an EF4 with winds of 175 miles an hour. Went right over us and everything just went off, blew up, it was gone. The twister that ripped through Nashville, an EF3 with winds up to 165 miles an hour. We now know between the two, 24 people were killed. The search and rescue missions have been called off now. Teams have located the dozens missing just after the storms. The focus shifting here to the difficult cleanup and recovery. Nashville strong. Y'all are doing a great job. Thousands of volunteers, neighbors, and friends pouring into the hardest hit areas. We are a strong community. We're going to be even stronger. Let's help each other and let's stay a community. A community battered, but not broken. It's a question we're seeing a lot. How long can coronavirus live on surfaces? Well, coming up, we're looking at how long it lives on something you use every day. You see it. Avenue, local black churches and college students from Atlanta all help shape the future of America. Once in Olympic City, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey, look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us. Use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from 5 to 7 on The Morning Rush on 11 Alive. newscast not enough for you get even more at 11 alive's youtube channel where you'll find uncut interviews extended body cam footage live streams of atlanta's biggest trials and more subscribe to 11 alive today babe where are my keys uh, where's my lunch where's my phone hey where's my blue shirt where's my pen have you seen it Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foyne Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go to waste. Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, auntie. No. <laughs> auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boil Water Advisory. Hyper-local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So yeah, just do what I say. I'm no, 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 You could have super. Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta, from movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood, it's like an. Well, you know, all week we've been asking you to send us your questions about coronavirus, and we've been doing our best to answer as many as we can to help you stay informed as well as prepared. It is quite a subject. Everybody is talking about it, thinking about it, wondering about it. And one question that we're seeing a lot of is this. How long can coronavirus live on surfaces? Jason Puckett with our verif uh, verified team looked into this. He found out how long it can live on something you use all the time, and you know what we're talking about, your phone. 
We've talked about how long coronavirus can live on surfaces, how it's unlikely you can get the virus from things like packages. But what about our phones? We handle these things dozens of times a day. Now there are posts and headlines claiming this coronavirus, COVID-19, can live on your phone up to 96 hours or four days. Is that true? Let's verify. Our main source for this piece is the World Health Organization and specifically a report on SARS from 2003. The WHO currently believes that COVID-19 can live for a few hours up to several days. It depends on the type of surface, temperature, and humidity. They've been comparing COVID-19 to other coronaviruses from the past, like SARS. And that's where the report comes in. In 2003, scientists found that SARS could survive on glass for up to 96 hours. And most modern phones are made of glass. So yes, since COVID-19 and SARS are both types of coronavirus, we can verify it's definitely possible that a type of coronavirus can live on a phone for four days. And remember, the chances of getting the coronavirus or even being near it are still incredibly low but it is a good reminder to clean your phone it's something you touch and put to your face regularly and you don't want to be carrying around germs in your pocket or purse with your verify i'm jason puckett well if you are feeling the urge to clean your phone right now which you probably are we have you covered on that front <laughs> yeah the epa says coronavirus is actually one of the easiest viruses to kill with the right disinfectant it has put together a list of products that's over on 11alive.com that are approved you can find all those in our As Seen on TV section of our app, 11 Alive's app. Sunshine on my shoulder. We know the song well. <laughs> Sunshine making a comeback, we hope. Still to come on Primetime, a look at a recent bright day and a few hundred thousand people who came out to enjoy it. And I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. <laughs> News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever-changing, always interesting. The Crog Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel it's good vibe. When you vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're going to get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must-see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. They <laughs> are fun. And they're, they're convenient. Fun. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a new yeah. way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. Well, here is something pretty much unheard of in college sports. A lacrosse season canceled because the coach and the players, they can't get along. Owen Lopez joins us right now. This is a rare story. 
Yeah, it's pretty incredible, Jeff. And this is all around the new coach, Jay Goldsmith, who was brought in to take over the program. The university sent out a pretty strong worded statement from the sports information director, saying in part that, quote, it has become obvious that the old culture is unwilling to adapt to the new coach and his system. Also saying that it is, quote, not fair to ask Coach Goldsmith to expend his emotional, mental, and physical energy with a group of student athletes that has communicated its unwillingness to adapt. Now, Jeff, to me, this seems like something pretty unusual, but you know, you're the expert here, you're the pro. What do you make out of all of this? I'm not an expert about anything. I, I just, mm, I don't understand you know why this can't be moderated. I mean, for goodness sakes, to go public like this is embarrassing, not only to the players and coaches, but to the university as well. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting statement because it seems pretty strong worded. And I want to read some more of that. We spoke to a parent, though, that was actually really reluctant to speak to us on camera, but says that the concern here for them is that because of that statement, that those players' reputations might be tarnished on campus. Now, part of that statement that I wanted to read to you says, that the school takes any and all accusations of abuse and harassment seriously, saying it hasn't received any formal complaints as of yet of that. Now, we will continue to follow up on this story and bring you any updates as we get them. I keep thinking about former senator and governor, lieutenant governor, uh, state uh, legislator, the one and only Zell Miller, who died mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, who's from Young Harris, former Marine. He wouldn't have put up with any of this. He, he, he would have gone in there and he would have moderated some sort of peace. He would have brokered something between the two sides so that we're not on local television talking about young Harris College yes. right now. So maybe the outcome would have been different. With him, it definitely would have been. <laughs> 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 All Thanks, right, Ellen. We'll keep you posted Thanks. on this. I, I want to hear that. That's, that's yeah. an interesting story. All right. Ron, all yours. All right, thanks a lot, guys. More primetime news ahead. Another day, another candidate dropping out of the presidential race. What this means for us folks here in Georgia with early voting already underway, just weeks before our March 24th primary. And not enough money. Concerns over proposed budget cuts could impact the state's ability to investigate crime with untested rape kits piling up once again. Well, tonight, why those concerns are now diminishing. 11 Alive News primetime on the ATL starts now. I want to continue to emphasize that this is still no time for Georgians to panic. Facts, not fear tonight. Reassurance from Governor Brian Kim. Georgia's confirmed coronavirus cases hold steady at two, but more testing has started. And state officials have said that they're going to triple the number of uh, COVID-19 tests in Georgia. They believe the number of cases will grow when more testing is done in the future. 11 Alive's Doug Richards is at the state capitol where officials gave a briefing late this afternoon that covered a lot of ground here from free testing to cleaning airplanes at Hartsfield-Jackson. We were given 150 test kits, and we have gone through already 50. I mean, today alone, we had double-digit um, individuals tested. Dr. Kathleen Toomey says there is more testing taking place in Georgia in private and public labs because of the availability of kits and the lifting of strict rules for testing. It's still not easy. Tests require a protective covering and a sealed room. Symptoms of COVID-19 are fever, cough, shortness of breath. Symptoms can show up in two days but can linger for 14 after exposure. Atlanta's airport director said Hartsfield-Jackson has ramped up its cleaning protocols, from airplanes and jetways to escalators and bathrooms. And Dr. Toomey says while there's zero indication of any outbreak in Georgia, the odds are good that more cases will still emerge in the coming days. We expect we will ultimately find more, more tests, uh, more positive cases, more positive tests, um, because the more you test, the more you find. And, and as we know, 80 percent of, of COVID-19 cases are, are very mildly uh, symptomatic, if at all. So we expect so, although we do not feel at this time from any, we have any indication that the uh, virus is circulating in the community, that there's wide community spread. We still feel the risk is low throughout the state. You know, we also had the opportunity to talk one-on-one -on -one with Governor Brian Kim during our 5 p.m. broadcast to emphasize that people should continue to use common sense and pledge to keep Georgians informed. I have pledged to the people of this state that I'm going to be transparent. If there's something that happens good or bad, we're going to share that news so we can continue to be prepared here in Georgia. 
By the way, you can watch the governor's full interview on our 11 Alive YouTube channel. Right now, 19 states have confirmed cases of coronavirus, including the first patient in Tennessee. NBC News is reporting that 12 people in the United States have died, 11 of them in Washington state, where the virus was confirmed in a nursing home. Well, tomorrow, President Donald Trump's going to be in Atlanta. He's going to visit the CDC headquarters to discuss the COVID-19 response during his visit. He will be accompanied by Georgia Senators David Perdue and Kelly Leffler. And we've learned a teacher at a Compass Prep Academy may have potentially been exposed to the virus. Now, this ties back to that 15-year-old boy who tested positive in Fulton County. That teenager attended the Living Science Center in Cherokee County last week before he got sick. Compass Prep Academy posted online today that one of its teachers' children attended a class with a 15-year-old and is now showing symptoms. But we want to stress that the teacher's child has not tested positive just yet. The academy says another staff member also has secondary contact with the 15-year-old. Out of an abundance of caution, the academy has decided to close until March 17th. As part of our Facts Not Fear initiative, we're verifying a viral claim that it costs $4,000 to get tested for coronavirus if you don't have insurance. Well, today, the state made it abundantly clear there was no charge to get tested whether you have insurance or not. In 2017, the CDC found less than 13% of the people here in Georgia did not have insurance. And there's a lot of disinformation being shared about coronavirus, but we're working to bring you real answers to your questions. You'll find tips to help protect yourself and your family on our 11 Alive app, including the EPA's list of approved disinfectants. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers. We are finally celebrating a dry evening. Can you believe it? The rain is gone. It moved out this afternoon. I'm on my Facebook Live right now. That's why you see my phone right up here on the screen. We've got more than 400 people on right now, and so many of them are celebrating and happy that the rain is gone. Um, we have Heather Lynn saying, yay, sunshine. Maybe Lake Georgia will recede, and we can put the snorkels away. All right, those are some of the comments that we have. I'd love for you to join that conversation. Just go over to fa my Facebook page, Chris Holcomb 11 Alive. Here you can see on radar, this is confirming what you're experiencing outside. No rain. We love this. We're seeing our radar scan and not finding any rain at all. But I want to show you this loop. This goes back 12 hours to 9 o'clock this morning. And you can see how we woke up to all the rain in our area. And that rain stuck around for a, a long while today. Uh, you can see the back edge, though. It was moving through. Once we got to the late afternoon hours, that rain shower activity started to taper off. That continues to move on over to the east, and it is out of here. We even had some thunder and lightning this morning, although none of those storms uh, were severe. So here's what we're watching as we go through the daytime hours tomorrow. I want you guys just to know that while we are celebrating the sunshine, uh, you still have something else that you need to be aware of and maybe even a little bit concerned of as well, and that's going to be the wind. Overnight tonight, those winds are going to start kicking up, and by tomorrow morning, we're going to be feeling wind gusts between 20 and 30 miles an hour, but sustained winds will be between 10 and 20 miles an hour. Because our ground is so wet and saturated, uh, these winds are going to be strong enough that some trees could come down. I just want you to be aware of that. Power outages could happen tomorrow, even though it's going to be nice and sunny. These aren't thunderstorm winds. These are just general winds coming in as the system exits. Stay with us. We're going to break down when those winds will be strongest with our forecast track and talk about that sunshine and if it'll linger through the whole weekend. All right, thanks a lot, Chris. You know, proposed budget cuts not cutting Georgia's Bureau of Investigations as deeply. That's going to top our speed feed tonight. Governor Brian Kemp recommended some hefty funding reductions in his proposed state budget. One of the hardest hit agencies, the GBI particularly, is Crime Lab. That's where evidence is processed, including more than 700 currently untested rape kits. The state lawmakers have restored money for the crime lab in their amended budget proposal, as well as funding to hire an additional three scientists and two lab technicians. In May, Centennial Olympic Park will unveil its newly restored memorial to the 1996 Atlanta Olympic bombing. In addition to honoring the victims of the attack, there will be a new tribute to Richard Jewell and law enforcement officers who helped save lives that July night. According to the Atlanta Business Chronicle, it will be a simple granite 
and metal sculpture. Well, pretty soon baseball fans can grab a beer while cheering on the Yellow Jackets. Georgia Tech is launching a pilot program to test alcohol sales at athletic events. The first trial of beer sales will take place during the home baseball game starting tomorrow against Virginia Tech at Russ Chandler Stadium. If everything goes well, Georgia Tech will be looking into extending alcohol sales to other sports venues in the 2020-21 season. Senator Elizabeth Warren has now dropped out of the race for the Democratic presidential nomination after failing to win any state on Super Tuesday, including her home state of Massachusetts. She says she is uh, taking a breather now before deciding on endorsing any other candidates. The race right now is still far from decided as we head into Georgia's presidential primary on March 24th. Neither Bernie Sanders nor Joe Biden has gained enough delegates to ensure a nomination just yet. An Emory political science professor, Andre Gillespie, says while they are in the same party, they attract a very different kind of Democratic voter. African Americans are more likely to identify themselves ideologically as being moderate to conservative. And so these are precisely the types of people who would be more comfortable with Joe Biden's message as opposed to Bernie Sanders' message. Well, Georgia has a large African American voting population to add to the mix. Georgia's progressive, young Democrats supporting Sanders. And it's likely the two candidates will be in Georgia this month vying for every single vote they can get. Coming up in the next half hour, we're going to look at how Warren's announcement impacts other states around the country that have yet to vote. You know, many of you uh, may be in the news, well, maybe watching the news the night of Georgia's primary to see which candidate is pulling ahead. That makes sense, right? You know, we've got questions, a lot of questions about how news organizations can predict who's going to win a race without official results. Jason Puckett with our verified team is here to answer that question for you. On Super Tuesday, a number went viral, and it wasn't a delegate count. It was actually zero. People were wondering how networks were calling the winners with zero official results. This happened with Nevada, Vermont, and even South Carolina on Saturday. And comments show confusion. How can a news outlet call an election when the state hasn't published any results? So we're verifying. How do networks call an election with zero official numbers? Our sources, posts from NBC, the Associated Press, and the National Election Pool, or the NEP. So the answer is actually pretty straightforward. Exit polls. The NEP is a group of pollsters and media networks, CNN, ABC, NBC, CBS, and more. When a voter leaves a voting location, exit poll workers ask them who they voted for. The more voters they poll, the more accurate the results. Now, these aren't perfect. They do have decent margins of error. And in close races, the networks will wait to call the winner. But sometimes the results are strong enough to cover that margin of error and then some. Like South Carolina, Joe Biden won by nearly 30 percent. So while it may seem like some back channel knowledge is being passed around, we can verify the races that were called at 0 percent were done by using exit polls that showed a very strong lead. Got any other questions? Send us an email. Straight ahead, a family desperate to find help for their three-week-old daughter, her rare condition that doctors have no idea to treat. Chief Meteorologist Chris Holcomb is live on Facebook as we speak, taking all of your weather questions. You can join the conversation right now on his Facebook page. We're going to catch up with him after the break. And don't forget, we are streaming right now on 11 Alive's YouTube channel. Subscribe and join the conversation in the community section. We've got more 11 Alive news prime time after the break. Got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you to do what I say. I'm no, 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 You can assume. Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A-Scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. Ah, I sent my drafts. That's my bad. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. 
In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Oh, I, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've nice got the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jess. I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh. Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast, not a... A Georgia family is desperate for answers after their daughter was born with a rare heart defect. She's just three weeks old, but her family says she has baffled surgeons who are doing everything they can to try to help her. Caitlin Ross met with the family outside of Children's Health Care of Atlanta. She's beautiful. She's great. She's a blessing, honestly. Graceland's mom is already so proud of her daughter and all she's endured. She had multiple VSDs, which I described as Swiss cheese. Graceland was born with a rare form of congenital heart disease, and her family says doctors told them there are an uncountable number of holes in her heart. They say surgeons told them they have never seen anyone like her. Your natural instinct is to want to fix and uh, nurture and take care of, and when you feel helpless and you cannot fix and nurture and take care of, um, it, it was overwhelming. Doctors put Graceland on a life-saving machine that acts as her heart and lungs. Most patients are on it for three or four days as their hearts recover. Graceland has been on it for 14 days, while doctors do everything they can to help. Everybody here at the hospital has been amazing, and I know, and, and the family knows, they've done everything that they can that go above and beyond. If doctors in Atlanta can't save Graceland, her family hopes a cardiologist somewhere will see her diagnosis and know what to do to help. They hope she beats the odds. We're hoping that she is in the lecture rooms in the future next to the medical professors and they could tell the story of how everybody was scratching their heads and they'll just introduce Graceland Webb and here she is. So right now, the family has established a website to follow Graceland's care. If you want to know more about her story, we have a link to our website at 11alive.com. Still having a good conversation on Facebook Live. That's why you see my phone propped up right here. We're just around 200 people who are on right now. Um, in fact, we have Patsy James asking, what about the pollen? I'm sneezing and Bremen. Pollen count this morning was only a four. However, now that we're going to start drying out uh, and temperatures warm up over the weekend, I'm expecting those pollen counts are going to rise as we go through the weekend. So we have a lot of folks on asking questions about the weather, but let me break it down for you right now. We'd love for you to continue with us on the conversation on my Facebook page, Chris Holcomb 11 Alive. But a lot of folks on Facebook Live are so happy that the rain is gone. Our radar is happy that the rain is gone because it's just been working overtime lately, finding some of those showers, but now it's not picking up anything as the rain has already moved out. This is a 12 hour radar loop that goes back to 915 this morning, and you can see that we had all of that rain in our area, even some thunder and lightning in spots. And then we were watching the back edge as this was really kind of falling apart and the rain ended once we got toward four, five, six in the afternoon. That's when that rain started pushing out and now it continues to move over to the east and it's pretty much out of our state right now and we now have the dry air in place. But there's still something I want you all to be aware of. I mentioned this just a few minutes ago. The winds are really going to start whipping up. Take a look at what we're watching out there with the wind advisory uh, that is in effect. It is covering all of North Georgia and Metro Atlanta and down into central and south Georgia as well. These winds are really going to be kicking up tomorrow. We're talking about sustained winds between 10 and 20 miles an hour and then we will also have some wind gusts that are going to be at about 30 miles an hour and because our ground is so saturated this is what I was just talking to folks um, on Facebook live about we were talking about how the ground is just so wet these trees can fall over easily with winds that could get up to about 30 miles an hour so I just want you to be aware of that now right now they're fine the winds aren't gusting now but while you're sleeping tonight, you may wake up a couple of times going, whoa, what's that? The winds by three in the morning are really going to be kicking up to about 20, 25 miles an hour. In the morning at seven, we have wind gusts 
That'll be at about 24 miles an hour. And then at noontime, still those wind gusts between 20 and 25 miles an hour and into the afternoon hours as well at 5 o'clock. We're talking about those winds between the gusts between 20 and 30 miles an hour. So these winds are be strong enough and it's kind of, you know, we're not talking about rainstorms or thunderstorms or anything. It's going to be sunny. It's just going to be windy all day and that's why we might see some trees that come down. Saturday morning, still kind of blustery out there, but then the winds will die down later in the day. You see these gusts that'll be below 10 miles an hour. So it'll improve during the day on Saturday. Kind of cool out there right now. 51 degrees, uh, 48 in Duluth, 46 in Canton. But when those winds start whipping up, it's going to feel even cooler. In fact, we'll see the temperatures dropping down into the low 40s in the morning. But look at this. Those cloud symbols are disappearing. We're going to see clear skies for much of the night and then waking up tomorrow to a lot of sunshine. So on Friday on the wasometer, our scale from 1 to 11, where an 11 is a perfect day. We're going with the 9. Windy and cool, 57 degrees for a high. The cloud cover breaks up tonight. Watch these arrows as they're coming out of the north and west. That's that wind. It's going to start kicking up, but at least the rain is gone. We're going to see plenty of sunshine and things are looking pretty good. So 57 for a high Friday and then Saturday we're going to be up to 60 degrees with mostly sunny skies. Don't forget this weekend is the weekend that we spring forward. Be sure and set your clocks ahead one hour before you go to bed on Saturday night. Uh, Sunday, we'll see a lot of that sunshine with that later sun set with highs near 65. Monday, 66 with clouds increasing. Then the rain chances coming back Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. About a 40% chance for showers with highs creeping up to near 70 by Thursday. You remember that one time it was sunny in Atlanta? That clear day when the best runners came for the Olympic trials? More people cheered them on at the marathon than went to the Kentucky Derby. Pretty impressive, Atlanta. 2020 U.S. Olympic team trials. You showed up, Atlanta, and now we know the exact numbers. 200,000 people came downtown under blue skies and national attention. Runners in white. Another Olympic moment for us 24 years later, and reinforcing Atlanta is running City USA, 121 days to the Peachtree Road Race. And then three weeks after the road race, the Summer Olympics. And you can watch both of those great events here on 11 Alive. You know, it's been a year since Jeopardy! host Alec Trebek announced his cancer diagnosis. Well, on Wednesday, Trebek reflected on the challenges of living with pancreatic cancer. NBC's Joe Fryer has more. Perhaps it's only fitting the host of a popular quiz show uses an eye-opening statistic to update his health. The one-year survival rate for stage four pancreatic cancer patients is 18%. I'm very happy to report I have just reached that marker. On Wednesday, Jeopardy's longtime host Alex Trebek posted a video speaking candidly about his battle with cancer. There were some good days, but a lot of not-so-good days. I joked with friends that the cancer won't kill me, the chemo treatments will. A year has passed since Trebek announced his diagnosis to the world. Almost immediately, he became the face of a disease where the five-year survival rate is just 10 percent, 3 percent for stage four. I plan to beat the low survival rates. He has provided constant updates. I began immunotherapy, but that didn't go very well at all. My numbers went south dramatically and quickly. Last fall, Trebek teamed with the World Pancreatic Cancer Coalition, raising awareness through a PSA. 57,000 Americans are diagnosed each year. Through it all, he has continued to host, wearing a wig, at times struggling with his speech, but feeling constantly supported, like in this moment during the Tournament of Champions, when a contestant delivered this final Jeopardy answer. What is, we love you out, that's very kind of you. Thank you. Costs you. 1995. You're left with the five bucks. Okay. It's that support that has bolstered him when he needed it most. If we take it just one day at a time with a positive attitude, anything is possible. All right. So to put this into perspective, the two year survival rate for pancreatic cancer is only 7%. But Trebek says he is confident he will reach that milestone as well. All right, straight ahead, as more sports leagues address the coronavirus and try to prevent its spread, what should you do? We ask 11 Alive medical correspondent Dr. Reddy about the risks in stadiums. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. 
in my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Oh, I, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've nice got the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jess. I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh, Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Uh, yeah. Right, right. About that. One reward would be... Slimming down. Okay, yes. yeah. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah. A little water yes. in my cup. And and beautiful skin. <laughs> well, you know, even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not going to be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Some mornings, what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your Morning Rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hot spots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Lo The coronavirus continuing to be a global issue. There are, are a lot of angles to approach this new virus, but we want to talk about the implications to sports and the sports community. Joining us right now is Dr. Sujatha Reddy, and we have seen Italy ban spectators from sporting events for the next month, major events in the United States coming in Augusta, the Masters, Final Four here in Atlanta. How should people read this? Yeah, and that's a hard question to answer, but I think we may have to take this by a person-to-person -person basis, meaning if you have a ticket to this event, I think you're gonna have to wait till it gets closer. Then maybe you think about your individual health because people may be putting themselves at risk if they attend these events, and what do I mean by that? If there's a person in the crowd sitting next to you, a row down, right. who has the coronavirus, you have a chance of catching it. It's just really hard to answer that, and I think everyone has gonna, gonna have to make, forgive the pun, a game time decision. Can stadiums do something about this? Can they limit the possibility of contact or how could they possibly do that? You know, I thought about that and perhaps instead of having seats right next to each other, we have space in between. Wow. Um, maybe you limit which concession stands, you restrict people where they can go, but that really will affect the feel of the game, so I'm not sure. I even thought to myself, could people possibly be tested for a fever as they're entering, as we're seeing when people are getting off airplanes from certain countries, but we know this virus can be transmitted before someone potentially has a fever, so that may not protect you. But having said that, we know the vast majority of people that contract the coronavirus will recover with no problem yeah. and only mild you know, illness. The summer games of 2020 in Tokyo, in Asia, it's hard to imagine how it does not impact these games. And again, I'm saying that early March. Do you have yeah. the athletes compete without spectators? Wow. I, I don't know what, what that looks like, but it's a very hard decision to make. And again, as you mentioned, not something we've dealt with before. All right, Dr. Reddy, thanks for your observations. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thanks a lot, guys. A bottle of hand sanitizer going for hundreds of dollars online. Next, how Amazon is fighting back against price gouging during the coronavirus outbreak.
We know you have questions and concerns. We know there's fear. But when fear drives us, we overreact and underprepare. So here's our promise to you as 11 Alive covers coronavirus. We promise that fear will never be our goal. We'll find the best experts and ask informed questions. We'll hold the powerful accountable to answer them. We'll bring you context and perspective to numbers that are always changing. We will always try our best to answer all of your questions. And if you're not getting the information you need or think there are other stories we need to share, please let us know. We are here to serve you, our community, with facts to help you prepare, be safe, and have some peace of mind. call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Live's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man. It's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home. From different backgrounds, languages, and religions, and who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once an Olympic city, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from five to seven on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. newscast not enough for you get even more at 11 alive's youtube channel where you'll find uncut interviews extended body cam footage live streams of atlanta's biggest trials and more subscribe to 11 alive today babe where are my keys uh, where's my lunch where's my phone hey where's my blue shirt where's my pen have you seen it Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, and Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, Auntie. No. <laughs> Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyper-local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. As the number of cases grows in more than a dozen states across the country, lawmakers are now ramping up the response to fight the spread of coronavirus. And today, the Senate passed a $8 billion emergency funding bill. This comes after both Washington State and California declared a state of emor uh, emergency. With well, Georgia Governor Brian Kemp confirmed today, there are still only two cases here in Fulton County, but we know people still have a lot of fears out there. People with obsessive compulsive disorder are particularly vulnerable. 11 Alive's Latasha Given sat down with a therapist who offered advice on how to keep that fear in check. Even before coronavirus, just worries about the flu can keep people with OCD from going out and participating in activities that they might otherwise enjoy. OCD therapist Shala Nicely says many of the 2.2 million Americans who struggle with OCD now have heightened fears with the coronavirus outbreak. Nicely says while many may think of OCD sufferers as people who like to be extra clean and have things organized, but in reality, she says it's the 10th most debilitating medical condition in the world. People become locked in this 
this mental prison from which they can't escape. Those people look around the world as a very dangerous place. Behavior modeling is one method used to treat OCD, but guidelines on how to prevent the spread of the virus may actually trigger fears in OCD patients. For example, the CDC's advice to frequently wash your hands may lead OCD sufferers who may, let's say, wash their hands 100 times a day to think they need to continue to do that. For me, it's been a constant state of fear. Christopher Tronson suffers from OCD. He says he can normally talk himself down when people are sick or cough around him. But the sight of people wearing masks, the international travel advisories, and the cases now here in the U.S. raises his anxiety to a new level. You know, people are dying from it. It just feels like there's nothing I can do and I feel out of control about it. Nicely says there are two things you can do. First, manage your information intake, meaning limit how often you check the news or social media for coronavirus updates. Setting boundaries to once a day or every other day could be helpful. Second, keep reminding yourself that following the CDC and the World Health Organization's guidelines are in your control, and that's enough to keep most people safe. You know, all week we've been uh, asking you to send us your questions about coronavirus, and, and we've been answering as much as we can to help you stay informed and prepared. One question we're seeing a lot of, and that is this, how long can coronavirus live on services? Jason Puckett with our verified team looked into this and found out how long it can live on something we use all the time, our phones. We've talked about how long coronavirus can live on surfaces, how it's unlikely you can get the virus from things like packages. But what about our phones? We handle these things dozens of times a day. Now there are posts and headlines claiming this coronavirus, COVID-19, can live on your phone up to 96 hours or four days. Is that true? Let's verify. Our main source for this piece is the World Health Organization and specifically a report on SARS from 2003. The WHO currently believes that COVID-19 can live for a few hours up to several days. It depends on the type of surface, temperature, and humidity. They've been comparing COVID-19 to other coronaviruses from the past, like SARS. And that's where the report comes in. In 2003, scientists found that SARS could survive on glass for up to 96 hours. And most modern phones are made of glass. So yes, since COVID-19 and SARS are both types of coronavirus, we can verify it's definitely possible that a type of coronavirus can live on a phone for four days. And remember, the chances of getting the coronavirus or even being being near it are still incredibly low. But it is a good reminder to clean your phone. It's something you touch and put to your face regularly, and you don't want to be carrying around germs in your pocket or purse. With your Verify, I'm Jason Puckett. We have an entire section uh, with everything you need to know about the coronavirus on 11alive.com, and you can also learn more about the symptoms and how long it typically takes to recover from the virus. <laughs> This week, people started to report price gouging on Amazon. In some cases, hand sanitizer selling for hundreds of dollars. Now Amazon is working overtime to put a stop to it. It blocked or removed one million products for just that. It's a violation of several Amazon seller policies. One requires you to provide accurate information to Amazon and customers at all times. Another prohibits manipulation of sales rank by making claims in the product's title. Amazon pulled other products for falsely advertising their effectiveness against coronavirus. A company spokesperson says they are actively monitoring for new policy violations. The rain is gone, thank goodness. We've been dealing with this all week long. It's finally out of here. We started seeing the back edge of that rain move out and taper off late this afternoon. And now our radar scanning and it's not finding any echoes. That means there's no rain out there. But here's the radar loop for the past 12 hours. And going back to nine o'clock this morning, you can see that we were just covered up in that rain. Even some thunder and lightning in some spots, even though we didn't have any severe weather. But that was sticking with us for much of the day. and then. Finally Finally, late this afternoon, that's when that back edge started falling apart and moving out, and now we are clearing out. Now, temperatures today didn't really move that much at all. We pretty much held in those lower 40s for much of the day, 52 for much of the overnight hours, and then 51 at 10 a.m., 50 from 11 to 3, and then we bumped back up to 51 degrees. So uh, really not a big range in those temperatures at all. Overnight, we're going to fall a little bit more. It will be a little cooler with temperatures by morning moving down into the lower 40s. But uh, look at this to see the cloud symbol that we have here with the cloudy skies, partly cloudy 11, 
mostly clear at one and then clear skies from three on into early in the morning when the sun comes up. We will see a lot of sunshine out there, but there's only one thing that I want you to be aware of though. We're going to be celebrating that sunshine, but the winds are really going to start kicking up. We have a wind advisory in effect. We're going to break that down for you and walk you through the hour by hour outlook showing you when it's going to be windiest during the day tomorrow and if that'll linger into the weekend. All right, Chris, see in a couple of minutes. So, you know, tonight some much needed good news out of that storm ravaged Middle Tennessee. The search and rescue has ended. All of the more than six dozen people missing after deadly tornadoes across the region have been found and they are safe. The mission in the strike zone now shifts to what will be a difficult cleanup and recovery. Jay Gray is in one of the hardest hit areas, Cookville, Tennessee. Two days later, the war zone. The devastation scattered across Middle Tennessee is still hard to comprehend. It's gone. Survivors' emotions a lot like the landscape here. I'm just a jumble mess right now. I'm just thankful, grateful. It's really all the words you can get is I'm blessed. I'm here. I have my life. We are learning more now about the killer tornadoes that battered the region. The deadliest in Putnam County, an EF4 with winds of 175 miles an hour. Went right over us and everything just went off, blew up, it was gone. The twister that ripped through Nashville, an EF3 with winds up to 165 miles an hour. We now know between the two, 24 people were killed. The search and rescue missions have been called off now. Teams have located the dozens missing just after the storms. The focus shifting here to the difficult cleanup and recovery. Nashville strong. Y'all are doing a great job. Thousands of volunteers, neighbors, and friends pouring into the hardest hit areas. We are a strong community. We're going to be even stronger. Let's help each other and let's stay a community. A community battered, but not broken. Topping our speed feed tonight, an overnight fire destroyed inside a Gwinnett County clothing warehouse. A flame started inside the building along Faith Industrial Boulevard in Buford, in Buford around 4 this morning. Uh, no one was hurt, but most of the building was destroyed. The cause of that fire is still under investigation. Delta announcing plans to renovate its Sky Club at Hartsfield-Jackson. According to our partners at the Atlanta Business Chronicle, the Sky Club in Concourse B will be equipped with a new food service area and renovated bathrooms. The plan is expected to cost $68,000. This is all part of a multi-year plan to upgrade Sky Clubs across our country. Bass fishing is now uh, going to become an official high school sport. Georgia will be the fifth state in the country to make it official, partnering with the world's largest tournament fishing organization, Fishing League Worldwide, and it will be co-ed with no designated season. You can find a lot more about uh, this new thing on 11alive.com. Well, the state uh, would have to immediately disclose all unauthorized leaks of ethylene oxide at plants at, you know, in Cobb County and Sterogenics under a bill passed out, passed out by a House committee today. There have been growing concerns that the toxin could be putting residents' health in jeopardy. 11 Alive Doug Richards has more on the breakthrough today with lawmakers on both sides. There are about a half dozen ethylene oxide bills in the legislature this session, but the one that is advancing is one written by a Cobb County Republican. Activists living near Cobb County's sterogenics plant have been pushing a measure that requires plants like sterogenics to immediately disclose to the state any leak of ethylene oxide. That's a gas described by the EPA as a carcinogen. The question has been how proactively the state should disclose those leaks to the public. Sterogenics and a plant in Covington called BD use ethylene oxide to sterilize medical equipment. Republicans introduced a bill that would require immediate disclosure of any ethylene oxide leak to the EPD. Democrats wanted that too, plus for the EPD to immediately post the disclosures on its website. Republicans wrote the website disclosure out of their bill Today, they wrote it back in. This is what the community wanted. When we first started this, what we wanted was for any accidental release to be reported to EPD and for EPD to be able to disclose that information to the public without the public having to file open records request. The history of ethylene oxide leaks is eye-opening. In Covington, the BD plant reported leaks in September 2019 and January 2016. In Cobb County, Sterogenics reported ethylene oxide leaks in July of last year, as well as two leaks in 2018. 
there was no law on the books for those companies to disclose some of those smaller leaks. This bill would require those companies to disclose any ethylene oxide leak and for the state to immediately make them known to the public. All right, straight ahead, Senator Elizabeth Warren is dropping out of the race. Next, the latest reaction from her team and how experts say her decision could impact the race. More. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water because I'm, I'm sugary. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Right, right. About I mean, that. Reward would be. Slimming down. Okay, yes. Yeah, right, yeah, okay. yeah. A little water yes. in my cup. And, and beautiful skin. Well, you know, well, even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not going to be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Some mornings what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foyne Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting. The Crog Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. All we feel is good vibe. We vibe with it. It's a good time. We don't worry about the hate. We just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're going to get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must-see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find... be running for president in 2020, but I guarantee I will stay in the fight. Today, Elizabeth Warren officially announcing she is suspending her campaign. The move comes just days after she suffered a poor showing at Super Tuesday. She did not win a single state, including her very own in Massachusetts. Now, everyone's asking the same question. Who will she endorse? NBC's Chris Pallone has more for us tonight. For Senator Elizabeth Warren, her bid for the White House ended where it started, outside her Cambridge, Massachusetts home. I will not be running for president in 2020, but I guarantee I will stay in the fight. Warren suspended her campaign two days after a disappointing showing on Super Tuesday. Once a front runner, the policy expert with a plan for everything. Warren couldn't win over enough progressives to beat Bernie Sanders, nor enough moderates to top Joe Biden. Now both will battle head to head to win the nomination. Online and in person, Biden and Sanders heap praise on Warren upon her exit. She has changed political consciousness in America. But the senator is not endorsing either candidate. Not right now. 
Warren's run will be remembered for her hours-long selfie lines and making pinky promises with young girls, encouraging them to run for office someday, and for effectively ending the run of New York billionaire Michael Bloomberg. And no, I'm not talking about Donald Trump. I'm talking about Mayor Bloomberg. As Warren returns to the sidelines, the race to become the Democratic nominee has gone from the most diverse field in history down to two white men in their late 70s. I have no regrets at all. You know, this has been the honor of a lifetime. Now the battle for Biden and Sanders to win over Elizabeth Warren's supporters is on. Isn't it nice to be able to walk outside tonight to walk the dog or to take the trash out or something and not have to have an umbrella? You're not getting wet tonight because the rain is gone. You can see the radar. The scan is going 360 here and it's not picking up any rain. And it was much different story out there this morning. This loop goes back 12 hours and you can see the rain that we had this morning. But there's that back edge as it moved out of our area and now we are dry. So let me show you what we're watching for uh, the daytime hours tomorrow. Even though we're celebrating this rain moving out, I still want you to be aware uh, there's still going to be some wind tomorrow and a lot of it. We're going to see some winds that are going to be coming in from the northwest tomorrow, 10 to 20 miles an hour, but at times gusting up to 30 miles an hour. And the reason we have a few concerns about that is because, as you know, we've had so much rain here this week and the ground is very saturated. So with winds like that, it could bring down some trees, even though we're going to have sunny skies. We're not talking about thunderstorm winds or anything. Nice and sunny, no rain, but just blustery conditions. And those winds could be strong enough to bring down some trees and maybe even some power outages could occur uh, if some of those trees fall down on some power lines. Now, the wind is fine right now. This really isn't going to start kicking up until overnight tonight while you're asleep. In fact, two, three in the morning. You may hear outside your window the wind starting to gust a little bit. And then by tomorrow morning, we're talking about at 7 o'clock wind gusts up to about 26 miles an hour, 25 mile an hour winds in Carrollton and in Duluth. And then those gusts still around 20 miles an hour around noontime tomorrow. And then in the afternoon hour, still those winds really between 20 and 30 mile an hour wind gusts, maybe even some higher gusts up in the mountains of North Georgia. And then it starts to calm down a little bit. It's still going to be breezy tomorrow evening and overnight towards Saturday morning. We're talking about some wind gusts in the upper teens and lower 20s, but then that starts to settle down during the day on Saturday. So very windy conditions here for you on Friday, breezy Saturday morning, and then that calms down into the afternoon with winds that'll go down to back to below 10 miles an hour for the late afternoon and into the evening hours. So temperatures out there right now, lower 50s. We've pretty much been holding in the 50s all day long with that rain. Then the rain moved out. Now we still have some clouds. Those clouds will start breaking up during the overnight hours and will cool down into the mid 40s for a low. Well, actually lower 40s will be at about 41 degrees here in Atlanta and then 57 for a high. Average high for this time of year is in the 60s, so we're going to be below average. We're going to see plenty of sunshine. You know, we rate your weather on a scale from 1 to 11. You would think, you know, a lot of you are probably thinking, hey, sunny skies, why is that not at 10 or 11 after all the days of rain? Well, it's because temperatures cooler than average and all that wind tomorrow. It's not going to be quite perfect. We're going to go with a nine, but enjoy that sunshine. Soak it up here. You can see the clouds that are over us now. Those are going to start breaking up and moving out by tomorrow morning. I really think we're going to wake up to sunshine out there with mostly sunny skies. You can see these arrows coming in from the north and west. That's an indicator of the breezy conditions that we're going to be dealing with. So breezy all day on Friday. Again, watch for that potential for some trees to come down. And then Friday night, breezy, but not as cold or as windy as it's going to be during the afternoon. And then on Saturday, this blue line, I know it's looking really squiggly here because uh, a lot of these uh, cities are going to be right on the cusp of being either right at freezing or a little bit below. But that's the freezing line. I think much of North Georgia and West Georgia will wake up on Saturday morning to temperatures just at or a little bit below freezing. And then we warm up a little bit more on Saturday. Those winds start to relax a little bit in the afternoon and we get up into the 60s. And good thing is we don't see any rain on this map, not many clouds at all. So just look for a mostly sunny weekend, dry weather conditions. And this is even going to persist into Monday, but we'll see a few more clouds building in on Monday. Watch the temperatures also as they rise 57 for a high Friday, 60 Saturday, 65 Sunday, 
and then the clouds increase Monday. Rain chances coming back Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday at about 40% with high temperatures in the upper 60s, lower 70s. And don't forget this weekend. That's the weekend we spring forward Saturday night before you go to bed. Be sure to set your clock one hour ahead and we go back to daylight saving time. Thanks a lot, Chris. Atlanta rapper Lil Baby is having a week of giving and it just keeps getting bigger here, folks. Wednesday, he surprised students at Booker T. Washington High School with a performance and a scholarship program that helps change lives. As students filed into the auditorium, they thought it was just another afternoon rally, but it quickly turned into a concert and a $150,000 scholarship donation when Lil Baby hit the stage. <laughs> So that means a lot to me to be able to give a scholarship to a child because it's not like I'm giving a scholarship to the class clown. You feel me? It's going to be the, the person who deserves it. You know what I'm saying? So that means a lot to me. Um, it's great, you know, being able to come back to the community and uh, get back to your, the school that you once walked in. The rapper, whose real name is Dominique Jones, says this will be an annual event. All right, folks, you know what time it is. You see your screen. It is time for Thursday's edition of The A-Scene. And we are kicking off with one of the most clicked on stories on 11alive.com slash The A-Scene. Oh, goodness, many of you are talking about Sylvester Stallone's latest movie and business members in the area, they're not happy about it. We're talking about the Sweet Auburn District. And though filming is exciting, many business owners are not happy. Now, business owner Joy Christina, she sent us these photos. She's with Clues and Cocktails off Auburn Avenue. And these photos show us the Samaritan set for Sylvester Stallone's latest movie. She says not only have crews left a mess, look at that, but she feels they do not care how the look is impacting the local businesses. She says they're even losing business because of it. Now, crews did pay the city for a permit, but she says the filming has even taken over her business's parking lot on Hillard Street. Christina has reported the destruction to Atlanta City Councilman Amir Faroki, who represents Atlanta's District 2, and wants crews to leave the already vulnerable area better than what it was when, the, when they actually came. We'll be monitoring. And this weekend is the big weekend. How would you like to learn how to write television scripts, pitch projects to networks, or even learn how to be a red carpet host? Well, guess what? It is back. The Black Women Film Network Summit goes down this Saturday, and it's the only event of its kind curated specifically for women of color in film and television. It's a full day of courses led by women content creators for Teleperry Studios, BET, VH1, NBC, TV1, and Turner, so many more. Classes include crafting digital content, writing a script in 30 days. I'll be teaching my very own masterclass on red carpet hosting with producer Ryan Dennis. There's even a monologue contest class. For tickets, head to blackwomenfilm.org. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. It they does. are fun. <laughs> they're and they're convenient. Yeah. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a yeah. new way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together our voices grow. Together we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together we are unstoppable. Together we are where Atlanta speaks.
Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they yeah. would wait the next week. You're, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Live's Chesley McNeil. I'm gonna give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students. We're gonna see uh, sunshine tomorrow. Ron and I were just talking about that. <laughs> we're so excited <laughs> yeah. about the sun reappearing, but just know it's gonna be really windy tomorrow. That's gonna be the only thing. You're gonna see the sun and wanna go out and enjoy it, but it's gonna be rather blustery. The wind calms down Saturday. We go up to 60, 65 Sunday, and then clouds build in again Monday with the rain chance coming back next week. Man, can't wait to hit the trails this Do Saturday. It. Yes. All right, hey, listen, more primetime news coming up. Jeff Hollinger is in the pen. And on and then watch us every weekday morning from 5 to 7 on the morning rush on 11 alive televised newscast not enough for you get even more at 11 alive's youtube channel where you'll find uncut interviews extended body cam footage live streams of atlanta's biggest trials and more subscribe to 11 alive today babe where are my keys uh Where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foyne Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And, of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, and Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Auntie. No. <laughs> Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The boil water advisory. Hyperlocal, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you just do what I say in the No, 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 You can assume it. Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. Ah, it's in my drafts. That's my bad. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm -hmm. Stop. I, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've like got most the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jess. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL. 
starts now. An 11 year old DeKalb County girl walked away in handcuffs as her mother watched. The girl's mother says police mistakenly ID'd her daughter when investigating an attempted car break in. The mother telling Joe Hankey she now plans to file a formal complaint with DeKalb County Police. Livid at DeKalb Police Department for detaining my 11 year old for traumatizing my 11 year old. Centria Hendricks says her doorbell camera recorded DeKalb County Police handcuffing her daughter. Yes, ma'am, she's been detained right now. And a second camera captured the girl being put in a squad car. I know she's terrified. You know, again, she is a strong little girl, but this is overwhelming. Hendricks says her daughter came home around 4 p.m. on Wednesday, and the cameras do not show the girl ever leaving. Police knocked on their door around 740. They say that someone broke into, attempted to break into a car um, up the street. He said it was a girl and two young men. The incident happened earlier in the hour, according to Hendricks, and she said police were looking for a 16-year-old girl with her daughter's name who ran toward her home. She believes a neighbor mistakenly gave an officer the 11-year-old's name, so she opened the security camera app on her phone for police. Despite me having video footage that shows that my daughter did not exit our home, you're still going to arrest her off something that someone said? The girl spent around 10 minutes in handcuffs and in the police car long enough to leave her in fear. She was afraid that the police were going to come back to her school and arrest her. Hendricks says a detective learned the girl in the car was 11, not 16, and let her go. A DeKalb police spokeswoman today said they were not aware of any concerns, but will look into it. Hendricks says she wants changes for how DeKalb PD handle children. Let's do our due diligence. Let's make sure that everything is, is good before, before we go to someone's house. And this just in a crash into a building on Marsago Drive in Atlanta this evening. You can see a large police presence by APD as they work to secure the scene. There's no word right now if anybody was hurt or what led to that crash. We will have updates for you on 11alive.com, the 11 Alive app, and later in this broadcast if we are able to ascertain any information. Here with 10 of 15 year old boys now charged in three separate major crimes in Cobb County. Police say that Mylik Dunn is responsible for a murder, a rape and an armed robbery. Last May, investigators believe that Dunn shot and killed 16 year old Neymar Kelly at an hostel apartment while in custody for murder. Dunn was indicted last month for the rape of an 11 year old girl. Police say that crime took place from between December of 2017 and the end of January 2018. Dunn also is looking at charges in the gang-related robbery of a man outside of an hostel steak and shake last April. Despite his age, Dunn will be prosecuted as an adult in the murder case. A middle school special needs student and her mother say that two other special needs students sexually assaulted her on their school bus day after day, and the driver did nothing. And they say there is now onboard video proving everything, proving the allegations. Fulton County Schools Police are now investigating and the mother and her daughter are suing Fulton County Schools. Here's John Shirk. It was on a small school bus used for special needs students. It's like a big SUV. And that's where Atlanta attorney Lee Park says a Fulton County Middle School special needs student was repeatedly sexually assaulted. The bus is on board video, he says, showing two other special needs students in April of last year assaulting the girl day after day over two weeks, then one of the boys raping her. There's a video of the rape. And Park says in this federal lawsuit against the Fulton County School District that he filed on behalf of the girl and her mother, the bus driver driver must have heard and seen the assaults but did nothing. If this was a one-time incident, maybe he didn't catch it. 17 days of horrific sexual assault. That's a guy who excuse the pun, is asleep at the wheel. Park says Fulton County Schools will not give him a copy of the video, but instead describe to him in detail what the video shows. A Fulton County Schools spokesman says the allegations are still under investigation 11 months later. Allegations that are, quote, extremely serious and concerning to the district. We look forward to the case being adjudicated through the legal process, not by attempting to make legal gains with press statements and grandstanding. Parks is demanding money to help toward the girl's treatment and recovery. Hoping Fulton County Schools will make changes to protect students riding the buses from now on. President Trump will be in Atlanta tomorrow to visit the CDC amidst the cor uh, coronavirus outbreak. We've learned a teacher at a Compass Prep Academy may, may have been potentially exposed to the virus. It ties back to a 15-year-old 
who tested positive in Fulton County. That teen attended the Living Science Center in Cherokee County last week before becoming ill. Compass Prep Academy posted online today that one of its teachers, uh, children did attend the class with a 15 year old and is now showing some symptoms. But we want to stress the teacher's child has not tested positive as of yet. The academy says another staff member also had secondary contact with a 15 year old. Out of an abundance of caution, the academy has decided to close until March 17th. As part of our Facts Not Fear initiative, we are verifying a viral claim that it costs $4,000 to get tested for coronavirus if you do not have insurance. Today, the state made it abundantly clear that there is no charge to get tested whether you have insurance or not. In 2017, the CDC found just under 13% of people here in our state were uninsured. Tomorrow, Atlanta Public School Superintendent Dr. Maria Kastarfin is coming to 11 Alive. The studio is here to talk about the plans in place to keep students safe in the case of a coronavirus outbreak. Be sure to tune in to 11 Alive News at 5 p.m. to hear that conversation. There is a lot of disinformation being shared about coronavirus, as you can imagine. And as you have already seen, we are working to bring you real answers to your questions. You'll find tips to help protect yourself and your family on our 11 Alive app, including the EPA's list of approved disinfectants. Well, here is something pretty much unheard of in college sports. The men's lacrosse season at Young Harris College has now been canceled because the coach and the players, they can't get along. Elvin Lopez joins us now. Yeah, well, this is something I don't think I've ever heard before. Yeah, and it's all around this new coach. His name is Joe, Jay Goldsmith, who was brought in to take over the program. And the university sent out a pretty strong worded statement from the sports information director saying in part that, quote, it has become obvious that the old culture is unwilling to adapt to the new coach and his system. Also saying that it's, quote, not fair to ask Coach Goldsmith to expend his emotional, mental and physical energy with a group of student athletes that has communicated its unwillingness to adapt. Now, Jeff, you've been covering sports for more than 25 years. You're being very kind yeah. to me. <laughs> There's a lot more years beyond that. But uh, yes, thank no, you just for... just 25, just 25. <laughs> so is this uncommon? Like, have you ever heard of anything like this before? I've never heard of it. I've never heard that the culture is not adaptive to the next culture, however that's defined. It is a curious situ a situation indeed. Yeah, so we spoke to one parent who says that they uh, are, are kind of concerned that there is this statement out there that that these players yeah. might be tarnished that they might be tarnished their reputations might be tarnished because of uh, what went out now the letter that was sent from the college president drew van horn says that the team did mention issues with the head coach but did not specify what those were. now the statement says in part that the team presented it to him as an ultimatum either terminate the head coach or the team would not participate the president of that college says that the investigation showed no reason for termination. He goes on to say that the players' scholarships will be honored throughout the end of the academic year. Now, he also told the parents that at this time they will be able to keep those scholarships and that no formal complaints have been filed as of yet. You know, as you're telling the story, I kept thinking about young Harris. And when you think of young Harris in the state, you think about the late governor and senator, the one and only Zell Miller, and he would not have put up with any of this. He would have been in there he would have moderated that debate and said, look, this is how it's going to play out, and it's not going to be on the local news making the university yeah. and the kids look bad. Well, it's here on the local news now. <laughs> it's on the local news. That's right. <laughs> Elwin, a curious story. Yeah. Thank you. We'll yeah. see how it follows. I'm sure you'll have Thank an update you, in the Definitely. days ahead. Yeah. Thank Thanks. You. We appreciate it. The Checkers employee accused of shooting a customer appeared in court for the first time. Jonte Robinson allegedly shot a customer at the Checkers on Candler Road in Decatur while arguing over the wrong order. The victim will live. He is okay. Robinson, not so much. His bond was set today at $20,000. The state would have to immediately disclose all unauthorized leaks of ethylene, of ethylene oxide at plants like Cobb County Sterengetics under a bill passed out of a House committee today. There have been growing concerns that the toxin could be putting residents' health in jeopardy. 11 Alive's Doug Richards has more on the breakthrough today with lawmakers on both sides. There are about a half dozen ethylene oxide bills in the legislature this session, but the one that is advancing is one written by a Cobb County Republican. Activists living near Cobb County's sterogenics plant have been pushing a measure that requires plants like sterogenics to immediately disclose to the state any leak of ethylene oxide. 
That's a gas described by the EPA as a carcinogen. The question has been how proactively the state should disclose those leaks to the public. Sterogenics and a plant in Covington called BD use ethylene oxide to sterilize medical equipment. Republicans introduced a bill that would require immediate disclosure of any ethylene oxide leak to the EPD. Democrats wanted that too, plus for the EPD to immediately post the disclosures on its website. Republicans wrote the website disclosure out of their bill. Today they wrote it back in. This is what the community wanted. When we first started this, what we wanted was for any accidental release to be reported to EPD and for EPD to be able to disclose that information to the public without the public having to file open records request. The history of ethylene oxide leaks is eye-opening. In Covington, the BD plant reported leaks in September 2019 and January 2016. In Cobb County, Sterogenics reported ethylene oxide leaks in July of last year, as well as two leaks in 2018. There was no law on the books for those companies to disclose some of those smaller leaks. This bill would require those companies to disclose any ethylene oxide leak and for the state to immediately make them known to the public. We have been waiting for this all week. The rain that we've been dealing with is now gone. You see how it pushed out late this afternoon. We're clearing out now, but before you celebrate, there's one more thing you need to be uh, aware of for tomorrow. We're going to tell you about that coming up. For the Democrats, it is the new reality. Biden versus Sanders. George's primary is on the 24th. It will be fascinating to follow. Today, Elizabeth Warren decides she is done. The Crowd Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pretty eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel is good vibes. When you vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate. We just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're going to get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must-see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. They <laughs> are fun. And they're, they're convenient. Fun. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. I just That's feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a new yeah. way of transporting. Senator Elizabeth Warren has dropped out of the race for the Democratic presidential nomination after failing to win any state on Super Tuesday, including her home state of Massachusetts. She says she is taking a breath before deciding to endorse any other candidates. The race right now still far from decided as we head into Georgia's presidential primary on March 24th. Neither Bernie Sanders nor Joe Biden have gained enough delegates to ensure the nomination yet. And Emory political science professor Dr. Andre Gillespie says while they are both part of the same party, they pull in a very different kind of Democratic voter. African Americans are more likely to identify themselves ideologically as being moderate to conservative. And so these are precisely the types of people who would be more comfortable with Joe Biden's message as opposed to Bernie Sanders' message. So Georgia's African American voting so population far, assessing Sanders all of is this, adding to the mix Georgia's progressive young Democrats vying for Senator Sanders. And it's likely the two candidates will be in Georgia this month, vying for every vote they can possibly get. Coming up in the next half hour, a look at how Senator Warren's announcement impacts other states around the country that have yet to vote. Tonight, some good news out of the storm-ravaged area of Middle Tennessee. Taylor Swift is now donating $1 million toward recovery.
and the search and rescue has ended as well. All of the more than six dozen people missing after deadly tornadoes across the region have been found and found safe. The mission in the strike zone now shifts to what will be a very difficult cleanup and recovery. Here's NBC's Jay Gray in Cookville, Tennessee, not that far away from Nashville. Two days later. It's a war zone. The devastation scattered across Middle Tennessee is still hard to comprehend. It's gone. Survivors' emotions a lot like the landscape here. I'm just a jumble mess right now. I'm just thankful, grateful. It's really all the words you can get is I'm blessed. I'm here. I have my life. We are learning more now about the killer tornadoes that battered the region, the deadliest in Putnam County, an EF4 with winds of 175 miles an hour. Went right over us and everything just went off, blew up, it was gone. The twister that ripped through Nashville, an EF3 with winds up to 165 miles an hour. We now know between the two, 24 people were killed. The search and rescue missions have been called off now. Teams have located the dozens missing just after the storms. The focus shifting here to the difficult cleanup and recovery. Nashville strong, y'all are doing a great job. Thousands of volunteers, neighbors, and friends pouring into the hardest hit areas. We are a strong community. We're gonna be even stronger. Let's help each other and let's stay a community. A community battered, but not broken. And it's going to take a while for them to rebuild and get things back to whatever normal is uh, the new normal is going to be now. Well, all of that system has pushed out that caused the storms in Tennessee. And then we had our rain over the past few days, but the rain is now gone from our area. In fact, radar not showing much right now. This loop goes back to 12 hours. We started off the day very soggy. We had the rain, even some thunder and lightning in some spots overnight and again early this morning. But then during the afternoon, watch this right here around 3, 4 in the afternoon, that all started breaking up as the back edge moved through our area. And now we've been enjoying a dry evening, even though the clouds are still kind of hanging out a little bit, but those clouds will keep clearing out during the uh, overnight hours. Something else you're going to notice overnight while you're sleeping, you're going to hear the wind kicking up outside your window, and it's going to be pretty gusty. There is a wind advisory in effect uh, from 5 o'clock in the morning until 7 o'clock tomorrow evening. The winds are going to start kicking up and we're not talking thunderstorm winds or anything like that. This is just winds coming in behind the system that has pushed the rain out and it's going to be blowing in between 10 and 20 miles an hour. Those are the sustained winds, the more constant winds, but then we'll have some wind gusts that go up to around 30 miles an hour. And because our ground is so saturated, it's just been so wet and soggy. These trees in the root systems with winds like that could tip over. Um, so I just want you to be aware of that tomorrow. Even though we're celebrating the sunshine returning, there's still a weather feature that you need to be aware of during the day, and that is that wind. Now, out there right now, it's fine. Watch these winds, though, as it starts kicking up overnight. We're talking about 2, 3 in the morning. That's when those winds are going to start kicking up. And by tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock, uh, we're going to see some wind gusts to around 26 miles an hour at lunchtime around 20 mile an hour wind gusts and then in the afternoon 25 to 30 mile an hour wind gusts so it's going to be breezy just about all day long uh, before things start to kind of trend down a little bit late Friday night into early Saturday but it's really going to be during the day Saturday when you see these winds start to go back down to below 10 miles an hour uh, later on in the afternoon so it will be improving but tomorrow's just going to be that blustery day temperatures are cool out there right now 51 degrees we do have some 40s though outside the city the clouds are going to start breaking up and that will allow those temperatures to fall a little bit more we'll move down into the lower 40s by tomorrow morning once we see those clearing skies but it's going to be so nice to wake up to sunshine in the morning and we'll see a lot of sun during the day now on our scale from 1 to 11 where an 11 is a perfect day you would think our first day of sunshine after all this rain would be an 11, but no, not quite an 11, not quite a perfect day because of that wind and these temperatures are going to be a little below the average with highs right around 57 degrees. The cloud cover that's out there now is going to be breaking up. There you see those arrows coming in from the north and west. That's that wind that's going to start kicking up. But the good news is no rain around. We just have to deal with this wind on Friday. Then once we get into Saturday, those winds will relax. We'll enjoy more sunshine after a chilly start on Saturday near freezing. But then we get up to around 60 in the afternoon Saturday and then 65 on Sunday with mostly sunny skies. And don't forget Saturday night before you go to bed, be sure to set your clock ahead one hour 
and that will take us back to daylight saving time. Monday looks good, but a few clouds start building in, but we're holding off on the rain chances and then a 40% chance for showers Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday with highs getting up to near 70 degrees. Check out your weather wow moment. You know, we're talking about our winds kicking up. It's nothing like this. This is uh, from the Mount Washington Observatory in New Hampshire. It was the windiest day of the winter season with gusts up to 133 miles per hour. And this is the observatory intern. You know, they're saying, hey, we need to get video of this wind. How can we show this? Let's put the intern out there. And uh, that intern was trying to walk against that wind, and it was very tough to do that. Now, we love to see your weather wow moments. We get a lot of these from our 11 Alive Storm Trackers. Just go to our, uh, go on Facebook. You can actually search 11 Alive Storm Trackers. Ask to become a member of that group. We'll approve you, and then you can be a part of this exclusive weather community where we share pictures, videos, and weather information. I'm Francesca Emmerker with the AC, and our insider spotted Sylvester Stallone filming his latest movie in Atlanta. But let's just say a lot of the community members in that area are not happy. I've got the photos to prove it. It's coming up in the AC. To get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting. The Crog Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pretty eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel is good vibes. When you vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're gonna get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must-see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. It they happens. are fun. <laughs> they're and they're convenient. Fun. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a new yeah. way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. So what's the best part about Uplink? Your voice. All right, folks, you know what time it is. You see your screen. It is time for Thursday's edition of The A Scene. And we are kicking off with one of the most clicked on stories on 11alive.com slash The A Scene. Oh, goodness, many of you are talking about Sylvester Stallone's latest movie and business members in the area, they're not happy about it. We're talking about the Sweet Auburn District. And though filming is exciting, many business owners are not happy. Now, business owner Joy Christina, she sent us these photos. She's with Clues and Cocktails off Auburn Avenue. And these photos show us the Samaritan set for or Sylvester Stallone's latest movie. She says not only have crews left a mess, look at that, but she feels they do not care how the look is impacting the local businesses. She says they're even losing business because of it. Now, crews did pay the city for a permit, but she says the filming has even taken over her business's parking lot on Hillard Street. Christina has reported the destruction to Atlanta City Councilman Amir Faroki, who represents Atlanta's District 2 and wants crews to leave the already vulnerable area better than what it was when, the, when they actually came. We'll be monitoring. 
And this weekend is the big weekend. How would you like to learn how to write television scripts, pitch projects to networks, or even learn how to be a red carpet host? Well, guess what? It is back. The Black Women Film Network Summit goes down this Saturday, and it's the only event of its kind curated specifically for women of color in film and television. It's a full day of courses led by women content creators for Italiperi Studios, BET, VH1, NBC, TV1, and Turner, so many more. Classes and Include crafting digital content, writing a script in 30 days. I'll be teaching my very own masterclass on red carpet hosting with producer Ryan Dennis. There's even a monologue contest class. For tickets, head to blackwomenfilm.org. A family desperate to find help for their three week old daughter, her rare condition that doctors have no idea how to treat. That's coming up next. Use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from 5 to 7 on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire yeah. week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go oh, away. Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, auntie. No. <laughs> auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyperlocal, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you just do what I say. I'm no, 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 man, ain't faded. You could have silver. Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta, from movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. Ah, it's in my drafts. That's my bad. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Oh, I, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've like got him. the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jess. I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh, Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut. Governor Kemp says there still is no reason to panic over the coronavirus in Georgia. He gave an update late this afternoon during our 5 p.m. broadcast. Georgia still has two only confirmed cases in Fulton County. Both are said to be mild. We are one of 19 states that have confirmed cases in Washington state where there were cases in a nursing home. The 11th patient has died. The total number of deaths in the United States now stands at 12. 
Today, Georgia State Health Lab began testing for coronavirus itself. They've gone through 50 kits already, but again, there are only two confirmed cases again in Fulton County. Georgia, along with other states, can get more financial support in fighting the spread of coronavirus since Congress now passed an $8.3 billion response plan. Cheryl Preheim spoke to the governor about the state's response and the plans that are moving forward. You made the announcement today that testing for COVID-19 is now an essential health benefit, so no one gets turned away, not even people who don't have insurance. Talk more about that. Yeah, that was really coming out of the White House and Vice President Pence task force, uh, which is good news for people that are on Medicaid, Medicare, private health plans. Uh, we'll pay for that, that testing. And then also those that are uninsured will also be able to receive the test free. So I think that gives Georgians a peace of mind should they ever need the test. I continue to tell people the risk remains very low here right now. The state now has more test kits, and today the number of tests tripled. So you're feeling comfortable with the resources that Georgia has at this point? I am. Dr. Toomey gave an update today uh, on the tests that she has and what they're doing and how that works in conjunction with the CDC. Uh, we feel good about that. We know that there'll be more resources on the way next week. That's something I spoke to the vice president about last night. Uh, there's a lot of private sector labs that are ramping up very quickly to be able to do the testing as well. And when that happens, it'll actually expand uh, the reach exponentially on that. And then we have a lot of other things that we have going on right now. I spoke to the vice president about uh, travel, specifically those coming from Italy and South Korea. And I feel really good about how things are uh, working at the airport. John Selden from Hartsville Jackson gave a great update today. And uh, it's, it's just good for us to get that information out to the public. So we just had the Olympic marathon trials. Governor, 200,000 people came downtown for the NCAA tournament is later this month. Do you see any impact or changes for big events where things stand at this point? I do not right now. As I said, the, uh, you know, the, the risk remains very low. We just need to urge, uh, continue to urge people to use best practices like they would during flu season. You know, keep your hands washed, use hand sanitizers. You know, don't go out if you're, if you're sick or you have a fever. Uh, and as I've been saying the last several days, if you do start developing a fever or some of the symptoms for either the flu or potentially for the COVID-19, uh, call your health care provider to make arrangements on how they can deal with getting you into the office where you're not just showing up in, in the waiting room. Uh, those common sense, th sense things will really help us. The public is going to be part of the first line of defense for this. And uh, we continue to communicate with the medical community, a lot of other stakeholders, and really plan uh, for what happens, you know, if, if things do heat up here. But that is not the case right now. We're just going to be over prepared and hopefully uh, we won't see those type things. You talked about it today, Governor. Uh, we are in an international hub with our airport. Talk about the efforts that are going on at length right now at the airport, cleaning planes. You talked about cleaning the building as well. Yeah, John Zeldin, I think, uh, gave a great update. Uh, they've ramped up uh, their disinfectant process at the airport. When you think about, you know, putting your hand on escalators, riding the train, you know, sitting in seats at the terminal, they've ramped that up. I felt very comfortable about what he was saying for the passengers that are coming in from North Korea, uh, from Korea and, and Northern Italy. Uh, those passengers are being screened multiple times before they leave those countries. Um, so we know that before they get on the plane even to come here. And then there's people on the ground here that are doing a lot more detailed questioning than they normally would when people are coming through customs. So um, I feel really good about that. John said they had one person that they had to get tested today because they had developed a fever on the flight, but that person tested negative. So I think those processes are working at the airport. And uh, I know that's something that the vice president and I have spoken about and the administration has done a great job being very proactive and thinking about those issues. We are really made the commitment here, Governor, to focus on facts and, and not fear. What message would you want to leave Georgians with this evening? Well, I'm very grateful for that, and that is exactly what we need to be doing. That's a big message that I've been telling people is don't believe hoaxes, don't fall for scams, continue to follow the information that is coming directly from the governor's office or the Georgia Department of Public Health, as well as our federal partners like the CDC. I know the EPA 
put out some cleaning information today for disinfecting. Uh, just all those things that are coming from official government sources is really the best information. I have pledged to the people of this state that I'm going to be transparent. If there's something that happens good or bad, we're going to share that news so we can continue to be prepared here in Georgia. All right, Governor, thank you for the time. I know you're getting many questions every day as we are, and we'll do our best to keep answering them. We really appreciate the time. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me on. Other businesses like State Farm and Time Warner restricting travel for their employees. You can find more about that in the As Seen on TV section of the 11 Alive app. A Georgia family is desperate for answers after their daughter was born with a rare heart defect. Graceland is just three weeks old, but her family says she has perplexed the surgeons who are doing everything they can to help her. Here's Caitlin Ross, who met with her family outside of Children's Health Care of Atlanta. She's beautiful. She's great. She's a blessing, honestly. Graceland's mom is already so proud of her daughter and all she's endured. She had multiple VSDs, which I described as Swiss cheese. Graceland was born with a rare form of congenital heart disease, and her family says doctors told them there are an uncountable number of holes in her heart. They say surgeons told them they have never seen anyone like her. Your natural instinct is to want to fix and uh, nurture and take care of, and when you feel helpless and you cannot fix and nurture and take care of, um, it, it was overwhelming. Doctors put Graceland on a life-saving machine that acts as her heart and lungs. Most patients are on it for three or four days as their hearts recover. Graceland has been on it for 14 days, while doctors do everything they can to help. Everybody here at the hospital has been amazing, and I know and, and the family knows they've done everything that they can. They go above and beyond. If doctors in Atlanta can't save Graceland, her family hopes a cardiologist somewhere will see her diagnosis and know what to do to help. They hope she beats the odds. We're hoping that she is in the lecture rooms in the future next to the medical professors and they could tell the story of how everybody was scratching their heads and they'll just introduce Graceland Webb and here she is. And the family has established a website to follow Graceland's care. If you want to know more of her story, we have linked that to our website, 11alive.com. I will not be running for president in 2020, but I guarantee I will stay in the fight. Incumbent for and a moderate. Today, Elizabeth Warren officially announced she is suspending her campaign. The move comes days after she suffered a poor showing on Super Tuesday. She did not win a single state, and now everybody's asking the same question: Which of the remaining candidates will she endorse? Here's NBC's Chris Pallone. For Senator Elizabeth Warren, her bid for the White House ended where it started, outside her Cambridge, Massachusetts home. I will not be running for president in 2020, but I guarantee I will stay in the fight. Warren suspended her campaign two days after a disappointing showing on Super Tuesday. Once a front runner, the policy expert with a plan for everything. Warren couldn't win over enough progressives to beat Bernie Sanders, nor enough moderates to top Joe Biden. Now both will battle head to head to win the nomination. Online and in person, Biden and Sanders heap praise on Warren upon her exit. She has changed political consciousness in America. But the senator is not endorsing either candidate. Not right now. Warren's run will be remembered for her hours long selfie lines and making pinky promises with young girls, encouraging them to run for office someday. And for effectively ending the run of New York billionaire Michael Bloomberg. And no, I'm not talking about Donald Trump. I'm talking about Mayor Bloomberg. As Warren returns to the sidelines, the race to become the Democratic nominee has gone from the most diverse field in history down to two white men in their late 70s. I have no regrets at all. It had, this has been the honor of a lifetime. Now the battle for Biden and Sanders to win over Elizabeth Warren's supporters is on. Harvey Weinstein now is headed to Rikers Island in New York City. The long fall continues from a Hollywood mogul. Man, oh man, he is currently in a hospital. He has a heart issue right now. He's had some procedure. He will be moved to jail ahead of a sentencing next week. Sources believe he will be put in protective custody in a dorm cell with around-the-clock supervision and medical attention as needed. Weinstein was taken into custody after being found guilty of two charges, including rape. His sentencing is set for March 11th. 
Architects are revealing new details into the Pulse nightclub memorial and museum. The club's original building will connect to a museum. There will also be a tower of memories which will memorialize the 49 victims of the 2016 tragic shooting. Lastly, there will be a survivor walkway which will run through downtown Orlando. The memorial and the museum projected to open in 2022. It is a question we're seeing a lot. How long can coronavirus live on surfaces? Coming up, we are looking at how long it lives on something you use every day. Chris? And we are celebrating the rain that is out of here as dry air moves in, but we still have to be a little concerned about the wind that's going to be whipping up during the day tomorrow. We'll talk about how windy it's going to be and when that will finally settle down. The King has joined the Braves, King Felix Hernandez, that is, but does he still have what it takes to be in the Braves rotation? He's not ready to surrender anything. We'll hear from him coming up next. An Atlanta icon, ever-changing, always interesting. The Crock Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel as good vibe. We vibe with it. It's a good time. We don't worry about the hate. We just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're going to get here. And that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must-see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. It they does. are fun. <laughs> they're and they're convenient. Fun. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a yeah. new way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. So what's the best part about Uplink? Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together our voices grow. Together we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together we are unstoppable. Together we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they didn't yeah. wait the next week. You're, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched. All week you've been asking uh, to send us uh, your questions about coronavirus, and we have been answering as many as we possibly can to help you stay informed and prepared. One question we're seeing a lot of is this. How long can coronavirus live on surfaces? Jason Puckett with our Verify team 
looked into this and found out how long it can live on something that we use all the time, your phone. We've talked about how long coronavirus can live on surfaces, how it's unlikely you can get the virus from things like packages. But what about our phones? We handle these things dozens of times a day. Now there are posts and headlines claiming this coronavirus, COVID-19, can live on your phone up to 96 hours or four days. Is that true? Let's verify. Our main source for this piece is the World Health Organization and specifically a report on SARS from 2003. The WHO currently believes that COVID-19 can live for a few hours up to several days. It depends on the type of surface, temperature, and humidity. They've been comparing COVID-19 to other coronaviruses from the past, like SARS. And that's where the report comes in. In 2003, scientists found that SARS could survive on glass for up to 96 hours. And most modern phones are made of glass. So yes, since COVID-19 and SARS are both types of coronavirus, we can verify it's definitely possible that a type of coronavirus can live on a phone for four days. And remember, the chances of getting the coronavirus or even being being near it are still incredibly low. But it is a good reminder to clean your phone. It's something you touch and put to your face regularly, and you don't want to be carrying around germs in your pocket or purse. With your Verify, I'm Jason Puckett. If you're feeling the urge to clean your phone right now, and I am among, <laughs> among those who want to, we have you covered. The EPA says coronavirus is actually one of the easiest viruses to kill with the right disinfectant. The EPA says coronavirus actually is set to go and you can do it. Just have to be di diligent about what you use and you can find a link to our story. Look for it in the As Seen on TV section of the 11 Alive app. Remember this time last night, radar was covered with green, yellow, orange, and red, indicating light rain, moderate, and heavy rain. We were tracking some of those heavier showers that were moving through, and they stuck with us last night and overnight, and then they finally moved out uh, early or late this afternoon. And now we don't have any rain. That's such a great thing to see since we've been tracking that every day this week. And here's a look at that rain. This goes back 12 hours. You can see the back edge that moved out late this afternoon, and we've been drying out ever since then. Now, take a look at how much rain we picked up today. We got more than an inch and a half. And look at this surplus right now. We were are almost 13 inches above where we should be for this time of year in rainfall that that is a huge surplus so we deserve a little bit of a break now our temperatures today we only had a three degree range in temperatures our low was 50 our high was 53 we should be around 61 uh, for this time of year so uh, tomorrow we're going to try to get a little bit closer to that with high temperatures getting up into the mid and upper 50s but still we're going to be below the average now i know we're celebrating the rain moving out but uh, you need to be aware tomorrow it's still not going to be a perfect day we're going to have a lot of sunshine it's going to look great however it's going to be really windy we're going to see winds between 10 and 20 miles an hour and at times we could have some gusts up to 30 miles an hour and so with our saturated ground, you know, the ground is just so wet from all the rain that we've been dealing with. A 30 mile an hour wind gusts could be strong enough to bring down some trees. So just be aware of that tomorrow. That could also cause some power outages. Here's a look at the wind speeds with our forecast track. Light winds now, but those winds are going to start kicking up while you're sleeping tonight. Two, three in the morning. Four in the morning, you might wake up hearing those winds that are going to be whipping around. Uh, we'll have 26 mile an hour wind gusts in the seven o'clock hour tomorrow. 20 mile an hour wind gusts around lunchtime and then back to 20 to 30 mile an hour wind gust into the afternoon hours tomorrow late afternoon. And the uh, wind advisory expires at seven, but it's still going to be breezy tomorrow night, but we think it'll go below the wind advisory criteria. And then Saturday morning winds about you know, close to 20 mile an hour wind gusts, and then it starts dying down into the afternoon. That's when we see those wind gusts going back to below 10 miles an hour. So Saturday is going to be improving even more with those mostly sunny skies and temperatures warming up a little bit too. Now, as skies clear out tonight, we're going to see those temperatures falling. We'll see lows in the morning moving down generally there into those lower 40s, but it's going to be so nice to wake up and see the sun as we won't have any clouds around either and no rain uh, around the area. So Saturday improving a little bit more high temperatures near 60 degrees. We'll go with the 10 on the wasometer for Saturday. Also a 10 on Sunday. A few more clouds build in Monday, but we've taken the rain chances out for Monday, but we do have rain chances at about 40% on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday with the temperatures warming up to around 70 by Thursday afternoon. With the cold and the rain this week, we are more than ready for baseball in sunny Florida. New pitcher Felix Hernandez has been 
a bright spot for the team so far. After 15 seasons with the Seattle Mariners, he is fighting for a starting spot on the Braves rotation. Maria Martin caught up with Felix down at spring training. Okay, Felix, first and foremost, you play your entire career in Seattle. This is a brand new team for you. How excited are you to be with the Braves? Well, actually, I'm really excited. I mean, I closed my shot door with Seattle you know, for the last 40 years. And, uh, I mean, I'm excited to be part of this team and uh, you know, trying to compete for a, for a spot in the rotation. I mean, it's a great group of guys, a great organization, and I'm mean, really happy to be here. What do you work on in the offseason, and what makes you confident in the stuff that you have right now? I'm healthy. That's, that's, I mean, that's the main thing. I'm healthy. I feel really good. My body feels really good. My shoulder, my elbow feel really good. And like I said, I'm, just, I'm ready to go. Do you get a sense that this team is really hungry to win a World Series? No, we, I would love to be part of that. I would love to be part of that. I mean, I've never been in a playoff in the last 40 years, and then, I mean, I had a chance to make the playoffs with these guys. And to be in a World Series, it'll be awesome. Here's one of the really interesting stories of spring training. We'll see how it turns out. Some March basketball. Georgia Tech taking on Pitt in the ACC tournament. And Pitt took away a big Georgia Tech lead, but the Yellow Jackets came through in the fourth quarter. Francesca Pan, 26 points. Georgia Tech wins 68-58. They face NC State tomorrow night. Way to go. So the SEC goes this way. UGA taking on Alabama. And Jenna Stacia scored 20 points, helping the Dogs upset the Crimson Tide, 68-61. They move on to the quarterfinals, inching closer to a bid in the NCAA tournament. Fantastic. But they will face number one South Carolina tomorrow afternoon. That is a tough, tough job. The coronavirus continuing to be a global issue. There are, are a lot of angles to approach this new virus, but we want to talk about the implications to sports and the sports community. Joining us right now is Dr. Sujatha Reddy, and we have seen Italy ban spectators from sporting events for the next month, major events in the United States coming in Augusta, the Masters, Final Four here in Atlanta. How should people read this? I think we may have to take this by a person-to-person -person basis. Then maybe you think about your individual health because people may be putting themselves at risk if they attend these events. And what do I mean by that? If there's a person in the crowd sitting next to you, a row down, right. who has the coronavirus, you have a chance of catching it. Can stadiums do something about this? Can they limit the possibility of contact? You know, I thought about that, and perhaps instead of having seats right next to each other, we have space in between. Wow. Um, maybe you limit which concession stands, you restrict people where they can go, but that really will affect the feel of the game, so I'm not sure. I even thought to myself, could people possibly be tested for a fever as they're entering, as we're seeing when people are getting off airplanes? But having said that, we know the vast majority of people that contract the coronavirus will recover with no problem yeah. and only mild, you know, illness. All right, Dr. Reddy, thanks for your observations. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Cool thing is, well, you may have heard that bass fishing is becoming an official Georgia high school sport. That's a cool thing. Jake Fromm may have competed in that at Houston County if it had been available. Yesterday, Fromm was part of a celebrity bass fishing tournament with other former SEC football players. He did not win. So, uh, you know, there will be other good fishing outings for him. But the bass fishing will start next school year at Georgia high schools. And that is such a winning idea. A wonderful, wonderful idea that a lot of boys and girls are really going to enjoy in the decades, the generations to come. That's it for sports. We are back right after this break. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Live's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once an Olympic city, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. 
you won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film Hawks Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from 5 to 7 on The Morning Rush on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, and Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, Auntie. No. Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. <laughs> I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyper-local, accurate weather alert. Don't you just love those sunshines there on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday? Dry weather, no raindrops, temperatures warming to 65 Sunday. Just know it's going to be windy tomorrow, and then we're improving a little more for the weekend. Rain chances coming back next week, about a 40% chance Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Well, that Friday, Saturday, and Sunday looks good to me. It really does. Let's take it. Awesome. We'll take it and run. <laughs> Thanks for watching the Big 36. News is king. So I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta, from movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A-Scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood, it's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. Ah, it's in my drafts. That's my bad. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm -hmm. I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've like got the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Chester. I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh, Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Uh, yeah. Right, right. I mean, that. Well, reward would be... Slimming. Slimming down. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. A little water yes. in my cup. And and beautiful skin. <laughs> well, you know, well, even too. more beautiful skin. You know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not gonna be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning rush weekdays, five to seven a.m. Only on Eleven Alive. Some mornings, what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm gonna go ahead and retire. <laughs>
it didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foyne Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave